The Conference USA football season heads down the stretch. Last week, the Blazers of UAB clinched the East, while Middle Tennessee and FIU continue to battle it out in the West. As for the Miners of UTEP and the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky, building momentum heading into next season is the goal. Finishing this season on a positive note, starting tonight with a victory. It's UTEP and Western Kentucky on BN Sports coming up next. We're heading for the stretch run of the Conference USA football season in 2018, and tonight we welcome you to Bowling Green, Kentucky, the home of the Hilltoppers. It's senior night as 10 seniors for Western Kentucky will play their final game inside the stadium as they take on the Miners of UTEP. Hi, everybody. Mike Leeson along with Brett Romberg, the uh, former All-American center from Miami who happens to rejoin us in the booth after two relaxing weeks in the studios down in Miami. He's rested up after the... Uh, third birth of the birth of your third child yeah rested but uh, definitely sleep deprived but I got a great supporting staff at home so <laughs> all right partner he's ready to go we're ready to go two one and nine teams and I'm actually excited about that you look at uh, the minors of UTEP they're coming in averaging less than 19 points a game but the last two weeks they've scored in the 30s so they're optimistic about that well, Mike I know you remember the passion that we were talking to the coaches that their quarterback has phenomenal quarterback Loxley now that he's healthy you're starting to see him develop even better whether it's in the pocket or it's running the football Loxley's game is taking to the next level especially now that they have that other dynamic of him being a pocket passer on top of that, you add a running dynamic as well with Wadley. It seems like in the last couple weeks, he's found his mojo, averaging 95 yards over the last two games and scoring a pair of touchdowns in both games. You can see here Wadley's numbers against Middle Tennessee and Rice. Done a phenomenal job. He did the 91 against Rice and the 99 against Middle 10. Not an easy defense as well to be running all over. Well, Brett, uh, talking about the running game, you look at uh, the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky. They were one of three teams to start the year with five brand new faces up front. Last week, they had their first 100-yard rusher since 2016. They're optimistic about that as well. Yeah, speaking of the mojo, I think the offensive line might starting to be gelling together a little bit. One of the things that I love about a team, especially when they've been struggling, is now they're starting from the core, the root. They're developing the offensive line here. And now that they've had a couple starts together, I think it's number nine going on 10 this evening. Western Kentucky's O-line is helping out their running back. And you see their running game starting to develop a little bit more as well. Busting through lines, creating so much havoc now. All they need is for their quarterback to develop himself as well tonight. I think we're going to have a pretty good contest here tonight, Mike. I'm really looking forward to seeing what's going on. And you see here Samuel's last week's statistics. First 100-yard rusher since 2016. Yeah, 6.7 yards of carry as we take a look at the weather here in uh, Bowling Green, Kentucky on this uh, Saturday night in November. Partly cloudy, about 45 degrees. And the wind's southeast three miles per hour uh, we were told earlier in the week that could dip down into the 30s before the game is over dana dimmel the head coach of utep in his first season when he was at wyoming and houston well and for the houston cougars back in 2001 and 2002 he brought in the top recruiting classes in conference usa and of course mike sanford in his second season mike sanford a lot of success with big time schools as an assistant coach he led uh, the hilltoppers to a bowl game last year well, right now, they're just trying to, to build a for the future. Western Kentucky won the toss, Brett, and instead of deferring, it elected to receive, and some of the smoke in the stadium <laughs> making me cough a little bit here. Yeah, it is a little I've smoky. A little bit of a dead air out here right now. Not too much wind, which is going to bear well for us here in the booth. How surprised are you that uh, they decided not to defer? They're going to take the football first. I like it, and you can see it already getting chippy right now on the field. Guys are worked up for tonight. It's senior night, and the fact that they're trying to send these 10 young men out tonight with a victory wanted to be part for the course, especially when they have done the same thing over and over since 2010. Well, the last time we were here, October 27th, we saw Davis Shanley start at quarterback. It's going to be Stephen Duncan, the redshirt sophomore at quarterback tonight, number 10. Yeah, I've liked him for a long time now, especially when we were here about a month ago, watching him go ahead and orchestrate that last couple series of that game against FIU. I thought he was great. I love the way that he stood in there. I like the way that he developed. He's tall, too. He's, he's about six foot four, so the way that he could stand there and throw the football is really impressive. This will be his fourth start. Shanley had four starts, and Drew Eccles started three times 
for the Hilltoppers. Uh, they want to go upstairs early, and Lucky Jackson was open, but it's uh, knocked away at the last uh, second. And a running step for step was uh, Kahani Smith, uh, one of the safeties, although he was beat at one time. Probably Duncan waited too long to throw the ball. Not only did he wait too long, he put way too much air underneath that football. And my goodness, coming across the middle of that football field, Jernigan, number 16, was wide open. Could have caught a cold out there. He was so wide open. So it's second and 10 from the 25 yard line. First possession of the ball game. Both teams are one and nine. Play action. Duncan fires over the 35 yard line. It's complete for a first down. Forward progress uh, should give them. It's Quinn Jernigan. That's his 32nd catch this year. I know he's looking for some touchdown because he got a goose egg in that touchdown category. See Duncan's numbers last week against Florida Atlantic. He threw for 228. On the season, uh, just shy of 1,000 yards, 874. New set of downs. They're going to keep uh, on the ground, and uh, it's a good power run over the 40-yard line, and that's going to be one of the seniors, DeAndre Furby. And again, going against one of the seniors, A.J. Hopkins as well, the Oregon transfer, meeting him one-on-one. -on -one. Furby with the call. Now it's going to be Duncan. He keeps it. He gets over the 45, has to get to about the 47 for the first down. Depends on the spot. They're going to give him the first down, a brand new set of downs. So back to back first downs for the Hilltoppers. A good start for Western Kentucky. Yeah, and on top of that, you see Kahani Smith getting down into the box, making that tackle. That's their safety, one of the big hitters. The Riverside Community College transfer. I Josh, like what I've seen so far, Mike, tonight. I've got a couple wide open wide receivers. I know they're going to be going back to some of those plays on this opening drive. Mentioned Furby, one of the 10 seniors, so he's off the field now as Samuel. Checks in as Duncan uh, takes it under center. Fires far side, little bubble screen. Lucky Jackson gets inside the 45-yard line of UTEP, and for Lucky Jackson, that's his 42nd catch. I also like the fact that they've got their right tackle going out there and making some nice blocks. Quinn Jernigan was one of the wide receivers. I want to have a big night tonight because I need him to get into that touchdown category. Furby, another senior that we've spoken about. But again, Duncan, I think, needs to take that next step in order to go ahead and make that job his next year. Here's a sweep. Those were the uh, Dr. Pepper impact players for the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky. Lucky Jackson uh, with the ball carrier. That's his second carry this year. He's a redshirt junior out of Lexington, Kentucky. He's got the top receiving game on the season against the Maine Black Bears. Four catches for 115 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Over Duncan's numbers right after this play. It's going to be second and about two to go. Samuel picks it up. Nice hole on the left side. He's inside the 25, down to about the 23. Coming up to make the stop is uh, Justin Rogers. Nice little counter play out of the backfield. They're even pulling their backside tight end, Kyle Fortenberry. And I like the way that the running back hugged to Fortenberry's right butt cheek in order to go ahead and make that linebacker jump outside. He set up his block real nice there. And it's another first down for the Hilltoppers. A ball inside the 25 at about the 23-yard line now. First drive of the ball game. It's been impressive. It's Furby again with the call. Furby's a fifth-year senior out of a Smyrna, Tennessee. He was injured earlier this year. So he comes in with only 33 carries, but that's his third already tonight, Brett. Yeah, he got a touchdown against FAU earlier on in the season as well. As we look at our impact players for UTEP, my favorite is Hodgkins. No doubt about it. The man is leading his team in tackles, doing phenomenal things. And the defensive back Needham is just your 100%. You know what you're going to get every single time he takes the football field. Hodgkins, a former Oregon Duck out of the Pac-12 and uh, one of eight grad students on this football team, as opposed to 19 for UAB, who... Wrapped up the uh, the west or the east last week, excuse me. Little shovel pass uh, inside goes to uh, Mike Quan Dean. And Brett, last week he had 10 catches for 112 yards and a touchdown against FAU. Yeah, and that little shovel pass right there. You see Tupo right there waiting for him. Nice form tackle. There's going to be a lot of one on ones, it seems like, tonight when it comes to making tackles and the blocking scheme that West Kentucky has right now. It's, it's basically mono e mono style football right now in the run game. Well, Brett, the last time we were here, Western Kentucky moved it up and down the field against FIU but couldn't punch it in. Now it's third and four. Samuel gets the call. Nice cutback. And he's not going to have the first down. So once again, they failed to push it in for a touchdown. And we're going to have to uh, 
try a kick as uh, A.J. Hodgkins in on the tackle again. That was the same exact play going the other way that I was talking about earlier when they're pulling both the guard and Fortenberry, the backside tight end. The running back did not follow. His pullers ended up stopping and cutting it back a little bit too early right there. Well, Mike Sanford says the heck with the kick. It's fourth and three on their first drive. They're going to go for it. I like that call. Coach is coaching for his job, so they say here in town. So why not put it on the players tonight? Let's see how bad these guys want it. Well, it's fourth and three. They're only 26% on fourth down conversions this year. Fake the pitch, and they fire. And there's a touchdown on fourth down as Jernigan, and he's in the touchdown column for you. I'm glad I picked him tonight as one of my players, Mike. Quinn Jernigan getting in that touchdown column. I like the play action here. You see Needham step up right there because he's expecting that toss and to make that tackle. And Michael Lewis is a little late to that football right now. Jernigan gets behind him, arms up high, catching that ball at the high point. Congratulations, Western Kentucky and Stephen Duncan. Opening up drives right now with touchdowns. And on for the extra points. It's not going to be Alex Ranella. Blocked extra and point. Blocked. As the Hilltoppers go with the number 13. And you know what? This seems a little bit uh, repetitive because Chris Richardson came running out of that huddle with his hands held high. He ended up blocking an extra point against middle 10 as well. So this is number two for him. So Ryan Nuss, uh, who started the season as the kicker, is back on the field for the extra point, but they get it blocked. But Quinn Jernigan, three catches, first touchdown in 2018. Conference USA Football on VN Sports is brought to you by Ice Cold Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville. Well, back at Bowling Green, 6 nothing Hilltoppers on their first drive. 11 plays, 75 yards in 454. And uh, Brett, let me apologize to Ryan Ness's family and friends. He was wearing number 13. He used to wear number 37, but he, of course he's a fifth-year senior, so Mike Sanford giving all the seniors a uh, the chance to get back on the field tonight and play. There's Dana Dimmel. As you take a look at uh, Mike Sanford now, Sanford, uh, of course, as an assistant, two Rose Bowls at Stanford, uh, three trips to the Fiesta Bowl, three different schools at Stanford, Boise State, Notre Dame, and now he's just trying to get this program turned around. And again, against FIU, I don't know if you agree with me or not. I thought, I thought they moved the ball well in that game. They just couldn't score. And here they miss the extra point. It gets blocked. So we'll see if uh, they can hold on to this lead now. Yeah, that's that conversation that we just saw Sanford having right on the sideline with some of his coaching staff. My guess is that was a little bit of a chewing out session. Warren Reddix uh, takes it at the 14-yard uh, line, a very short kick. Reddix is up to the uh, 30 or just shy of the 30-yard line. So the Miners on their first possession will have some uh, decent field position. And we're going to see the junior last year's uh, Junior College Offensive Player of the Year and Kai Loxley, who we did not see in El Paso earlier this year. Plenty of rushing touchdowns this young man has as well. Six right now in the league. But again, after speaking to the coaching staff throughout the week, they kept emphasizing the fact that he's developing as a pocket passer. So it's interesting to go ahead and add that dynamic to this young man's game, not only being a dual threat, but also possibly learning this game a little bit more in depth with you know this phenomenal coaching staff as well over there. Loxley 66 percent last year in junior college only 51 percent this year for the Miners. They want to come out throwing and this one is picked off at the 40 yard line. And just like that Roger Cray has his first interception of the year. The sophomore the only freshman last year to play in every game for the Hilltoppers. Yeah, they ended up going ahead and trying to make it look like a run by pulling the backside guard, faking, pulling the ball back in, and it gets tipped right at that line of scrimmage. Roger Cray coming up big earlier on in this football game. Oh, that's the senior Ben Holt at the line of scrimmage, jumping and tipping that ball. I imagine the defensive coordinator, Coach Cox, might have a little bit of a mixed emotions on that one. As a seven, oh, go ahead. I was going to say I was going to talk about the relationship that Coach Cox has with Ben Holt. I know him and his dad are basically in the best friend category, and he watched Holt grow up as a kid. So I imagine there's a little bit of excitement for the young man, but yeah. tonight it's going to have to wait. He said he's known him since he was uh, in the cradle, little baby, about a week old, I think he said. And uh, his dad, Nick Holt, now with Purdue and Jeff Brom, who's rumored to be headed from. West Lafayette over to Louisville 
We'll see if uh, that transpires as well. But right now, Western Kentucky with a great field position at the 33-yard line after the interception. Duncan under center again. Lucky Jackson with yet another carry. Nice lane, cuts it back, and he's inside the 25 down to the 22. You know what? I'm liking some of this violence that they continually dishing out right now, being very aggressive, running that end around. Jernigan even coming backside as well, throwing a nice little block out there. Western Kentucky coming to play tonight. Now we mentioned Lucky Jackson, only one carry coming into the ball game, and that's his, what, second or third carry already tonight as he gets it down to the 22-yard line. Another brand-new set of downs for the Hilltoppers. This time working out of the gun, Duncan. Furby gets the call and runs into a wall. Might have got back to the line of scrimmage. And Chris Richardson, Jr., the first to make the contact there at the line of scrimmage for the Miners of UTEP. See, I keep seeing the offensive line right now. I'm not enjoying the footwork. I imagine Coach Woods might have a word with these guys in the film room after this one because a lot of first steps backwards right now. They need to go ahead and keep their shoulder pads low and gain ground on that first step. So it's second and ten from the gun. Duncan looks near side, fires, looking for Jernigan, has it. And he's out of bounds at about the one-yard line or just inside the one. So Jernigan, a redshirt junior, has a touchdown for you, almost had a second. Yeah, I like the way that he's playing so far tonight. The fact that he's catching the ball at the high point, he's going up, he's attacking the football. We didn't see that earlier on in the season from Western Kentucky. And they keep it on the ground, and they power in for the touchdown. And it's going to be Furby, the fifth-year senior, gets his third rushing touchdown this year. You know what I like seeing right now, Mike? I like seeing the fact that Coach Sanford isn't afraid to call some trick plays. You see a lot of end-around stuff, a lot of misdirection. He said, you know what, tonight, why not? Give it to some of the young men that might be leaving this institution. Get them some plays, get their name up on the board. Kind of create a little bit of havoc and have some fun here tonight in Bowling Green. There's Alex Rinella after the last PAT was blocked. Rinella on for the first time tonight. This one's good. Two possessions for the Hilltoppers. Two touchdowns. 8.27 to go. We're still in the first quarter. 13-0 Western Kentucky. Well, back in Bowling Green, Kentucky, Mike Gleason along with the Remington Award winner during his uh, Miami Hurricane days, uh, Brett Romberg. And, well, they've won seven straight on senior night. So far, so good for the Hilltoppers. Yeah, I like what we see so far tonight. Very aggressive in the play calling. And granted, that field possession on that pick didn't help either for UTEP. So we're looking at UTEP getting ready to get the ball back here and see what kind of offense Demo's going to go ahead and put on this football field. So once again, uh, Terry Janiel and Warren Reddix, the deep men, as they await the kick from Alex Ranello, the redshirt junior for the Hilltoppers. The last kick was short. Reddix is standing at the 10 yard line. Now Janiel, who had 95 yards and returns last week against Middle Tennessee, backs up to about the four yard line. And Janiel backs up into the end zone. Takes a knee, and the Miners will start at the 25-yard line. So the Miners are coming off a loss to Middle Tennessee, 48 to 32. But again, averaging less than 19 points a game. They scored 34 two weeks ago, 32 last week. So they thought the offense was starting to click. They used two quarterbacks last week in uh, Kai Loxley and Brandon Jones. Loxley, of course, according to Mike Canales, the offensive coordinator, he was dinged up the last time we were down in uh, El Paso. Said he's only about 55%, and he's playing on toughness out there. Yeah, the young man's very competitive. Drops back, throws off his back foot. Two passes and two interceptions. This one's Drell Green. Green inside the 30, all the way down to the 20-yard line. So Drell Green making his 29th start tonight. The senior out of Alma, Georgia, gets his first INT. Yeah, in front of the fam, too. We saw earlier tonight. The seniors honoring the seniors walking out, handing the bouquet of roses to mom. Congratulations on that interception. But I knew this play was doomed from the beginning. Watch him throw off his back foot. His feet are standing side by side. He could feel the collapsing pocket. Just threw the ball up in the air right there. There was no wide receivers around the football. Actually, the only people were there were the two safeties from Western Kentucky. 
So if Green didn't want it, I'm sure number 24, Roger Cray, was going to be the one that was going to take it from him anyway. <laughs> that would have been his second. 32 yards on the return for Green. Brings it all the way down to the uh, 20. So uh, Stephen Duncan saying, hey, this is pretty easy. This is pretty nice. With the, the ball on the 20 right now. Already in the red zone. Last drive started on the 33. Empty backfield. Duncan wants to run it. Duncan has a lane. He's inside the 15, inside the 10 yard line. And Duncan at 6'4, 230, finally goes down after the whistle is blown inside the 10. I like the functionality right now that I'm starting to see out of Duncan. They're not afraid to run him with the football either. You saw him tuck and run right away, and they continually keep using Fortenberry, that tight end, as one of their pullers and blockers. Picked up the first down. It's first and goal at the nine yard line now for the Hilltoppers. Trying to work on that 13 nothing lead here in the first quarter. Hand off inside is going to be Appleberry down to the five yard line. The freshman out of Atlanta. That's his 50th uh, carry his first in this ball game tonight. He's got himself three touchdowns so far on this season as well. I know they were expecting big things out of him. He's one of the most talented backs that this program has had in a little while. Just hasn't really. I don't know if it was the fact that they've had that quarterback on the rotation or what the situation might be, but it seems like they're going to start moving now that the O-line is getting together. Well, Mike Sanford, he's played four quarterbacks this year, three different starters for the entire 2018 season. Furby's back on the field. Furby with the call, and Furby wants that touchdown. Remember, he came back against FIU after being an injured, and Mike Sanford said he had a look in his eye. Oh, this is his final year. Yeah, some players just do not want to come off the field, and you can see Big Furby right now breaking arm tackles, running through some of the arms of the defense right now of UTEP. Third goal at the two, and there's another touchdown pass. This one goes to Lucky Jackson. Lucky, lucky. Hitting Jackson on the slant. Quick hitting play. And it looks like everybody was practicing their touchdown dances on Friday as well. <laughs> Offensive line jumping out, getting the hands down of the defensive front. Perfectly timed throw as well. So Lucky Jackson, who has four 100-yard career games, so one so far in 18, has his fourth receiving touchdown. And for Stephen Duncan, he has eight touchdown strikes now, two already here tonight. They're going to go for two after uh, having that first extra point blocked. Unfortunately, they're going to have to blow a timeout here. They don't have enough guys on the field, Mike. Broderick Hale, it might be a little bit late getting out, out there. Looks like the Miners, Miners took the timeout, helped them out. So the Miners used their first of three here in the first half with 6.56 to go in the first quarter. You know, Dana Demo said last week uh, started early, even though it was in El Paso. They fumbled on the first play on their first possession. And now Loxley throws a pick on their first possession two picks on their first two possessions this week he said it's going to be a later start long road trip cold weather all part of the equation and they have to handle all parts well so far not so good yeah so far that that travel might have done a little bit damage to him and the fact that it was 29 degrees here this morning when I woke up and went for my little walk that grass was frozen the trees were frozen it just I don't know if that El Paso weather is anything like this weather. <laughs> it's not as cold as I thought it would be so far. No, We're so far take so nice. 6.56 to go, quarter number one. Conference USA football on VN Sports is brought to you by Ice Cold Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville. And the fans here inside Houchin Smith Stadium, happy so far as the extra points drilled through by Ranella. And with 6.56 to go, Western Kentucky opens up a 20 to nothing lead. Last drive, just 20 yards, four plays in a minute 18. I know one of the factors we were talking with the defensive coordinator, Coach Cox, about was his defense and how ultimately paper thin they really were in terms of their depth. It doesn't help right now that the majority of the time that Western Kentucky is getting the football on offense, it's already starting off in the red zone. So looking up at that clock right now, and you're Seeing a 20 to nothing score in the first quarter, that doesn't bode well right now for UTEP in the mentality of this defense. Not surprised that Western Kentucky got it going. I'm a little bit surprised then how the Miners. We had that game against North Texas, and it was 27 to 24. Bill Clark from UAB went down there and beat them 19 to nothing, but he was impressed with how far 
how the uh, the miners fought for the entire 60 minutes. Well, as long as Kai Loxley continually fights tonight and doesn't come back out and throw another pick, because having two series with picks mentally, that's got to mess with that quarterback. Terry Janiel gets up over the uh, 20, and he's wrestled down at the uh, 21 yard line. Look at the excitement on the special teams, too. What a mentality these guys have here tonight. It's a big difference, man, when you can taste that victory. Oh, huh? yeah, that energy becomes contagious as well, too. You got the coaches running off off the sideline right now, high five and everybody. Well, Mike Canalo said we're going to see both quarterbacks probably uh, tonight. And right now, it's going to be uh, Wadley in the backfield. And that's the second quarterback. That's Brandon Jones, the junior out of Bakersfield. Loxley's two for two, but both of his passes to the wrong team so far. And uh, Brandon Jones picks up three. It might be one of those situations where they just need to pull the young man off the field, maybe give him a series or two, clear his head a little bit, allow him to come back into this ball game. Yeah, keep in mind, Loxley, as uh, Dana Dimmel said, you know, playing at about 55 percent. Usually, when a guy's injured, he said, "Well, he's about 80, 90 percent." But 55 percent, he's just playing on guts and toughness right now. But Jones comes in near side, overshoots his man. He's had only not a lot of reps this year, but he's only at 46 uh, percent. The intended receiver that time was Reddix. Jones is thrown for 219 yards, carried 23 times after that last one. His best one, he was uh, seven for 15 for 98 yards at Louisiana Tech. You got their playmaker down near the bottom of your screen right now. Second receiver in from the sideline is Janiel. Usually when they put that star studded guy in there, they want to make something happen on offense. Jones. And they do. Wants to go deep. Janiel has it at the midfield stripe. And he runs out of bounds uh, inside Western Kentucky territory at the 47 uh, yard line. When you got an athlete as talented as Janiel, there's no doubt in my mind when he comes into this football game as a defensive coordinator, you got to know where he's at at all times. You see him get behind his corner right now, covered by that linebacker to Corian Darden. That's a mismatch. Well, Janiel, over 100 yards in all purpose uh, yardage uh, four times this year for the Miners. This is Warren Reddix. Reddix slides to a little hole down to about the uh, 41 yard line. Reddick's is their leading receiver at 29. That's his 30th catch. Still looking for his first touchdown here in 2018. He's a senior out of El Paso. Got the full house right now at the linebacker position. Devin Keys down inside the box. Play action. And this one's complete at the 35 yard line. And that's Eric Brown. Another senior from Inland Empire, California. That's only his eighth catch this year. Yeah, he got his first touchdowns against Middle Tennessee as well. Six foot one, 175 pound senior. Trying to contribute right now to this offense, trying to figure something out. You know, Brett, obviously Loxley's thrown two picks already. The Miners, they've been outscored 80 to 22 as a result of turnovers this year. So turnovers have just killed this football team. And 52 of the 80 have come in the first half, so now it's a 54 of the 82. Oh! This and they got off. another one, Mike. Wow. To Corey and Darden, the redshirt junior. That's going to be his third, and he's finally wrestled down at the 20-yard line. Well, using the tip drill that time, and now Brandon Jones throws his first pick of the season. That's their third of the ball game. Well, it started out with Coach Dimmel yelling at his wide receiver, Eric Brown, to open up a little bit more down on the numbers, which kind of created a little bit of a distraction when it came to the alignment of the wide receivers. And when you got your quarterback running and whipping and trying to throw the football 100 miles an hour, Kenyon Foster, who ends up making the tackle on this play due to the sweet feet of the Corey Dart right there. Three picks. So we're looking at three for three on these series so far right now for UTEP. My goodness, what can you call as an offensive coordinator when you've gotten three picks in a row? 
And Brett, that's the most INTs in a single quarter uh, by Western Kentucky since joining the FBS. This is their 10th year playing FBS football. Lucky Jackson has it near side. Gets a block and he's up over the 25 yard line. And now Western Kentucky starting to look like that team that Mike Sanford thought they could be. Yeah, on top of that, I feel like I'm at the Oprah show right now and the defense is sitting in the audience and Oprah standing at the front saying, and you get a pick, and you get a pick. <laughs> it seems like everybody in that backfield so far is about to get one. Well, Duncan has to be enjoying himself in his fourth start this year. Apple, Appleberry uh, tries to bounce to the outside. He's smothered by several jerseys. I think number uh, three is Yoni Tupo leading the attack. C.J. Reese was in there as well. Good to see him back. He's been out a couple weeks. I know that needed a nice little boost going into that defensive front as well. Good to have him back in that lineup. So you got Mascaro, Reese, Soda working those ends. I mentioned earlier in the broadcast, Mike Juan Dean uh, with 10 catches for 112 yards last week. Yet to have a uh, football thrown his way as of yet. Duncan looks, fires. Jernigan has another catch. And he's up to about the 33, and Jernigan took a hit. And he's feeling a little bit of pain. Might have taken one off the thigh a little bit there. You can see him rubbing his upper thigh. But I saw right there Duncan grow as a player. So the last home run uh, back in 2017, you saw that graphic. They're flanking Duncan down here at the bottom of your screen. He's standing on the 30 yard marker. And they brought in Shanley to go ahead and do this. Double reverse, little flea flicker play. Duncan looks, fires, and this is going to fall incomplete. Not a bad job by oh, Shanley. Duncan. Yeah. David Shanley, the intended receiver, coming off the sidelines. Jumping a little bit too early. We talked about Jernigan trying to catch that ball at the high point. It seems like uh, Shanley might have to get in that drill a little bit with Jernigan. A little, little early. Kind of <laughs> jumped the gun on that one, no pun intended. Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, great call on your part. He probably would have had it if he timed it. Of course, he's used to throwing the ball, not catching it. Tupo showing blitz. Backs off now. Duncan backs into the uh, shotgun. Second and ten. Duncan wants to go deep this time and has his man. And penalty flag. I was just about to say decent coverage uh, yeah, out there. I thought I thought Connie Smith had really good coverage. I wouldn't mind seeing a nice little close up of this one and find out where he ended up getting the violation. On the defense, number four, 15 yard building, automatic. First well, Mike Cox, the defensive coordinator, was telling you earlier this week that uh, the safety play has been very inconsistent. But Smith. Uh, a little bit early. That's the problem right there. But uh, did the referee call it on number four or 24? He called it on number four. Yeah, he meant number 24, though. That's what I figured. Yeah, he just got to the ball a little bit early. Tenant receiver, uh, Jafor Pearson. Yeah, but when I was talking earlier about Duncan growing on a particular play, the way that he's influencing the linebackers tonight, not only by running the football, but getting to the line of scrimmage and making those linebackers bite on the fact that he might be the guy running it. Furby found the hole and almost broke it right up the middle. He's just keeping guys honest on that defensive unit. I think Josh Ortega stuck his arm off, right? Kind of pulled him down. Might have got a face mask on the on the call. Yep. Well, doesn't no, look like he has the face mask. Just the caller. Play action near side. Caught at the 10 yard line. There's Mike Juan Dean with his first catch. That's going to be number 40 for him. He's the second leading receiver on this football team. Picks up 35 yards on the play. And he does have his wristbands on tonight, too, ladies and gentlemen. He's got three on each arm right there. <laughs> but you see the nice play fake here right now. I know up front on the defensive side, they're running some games up front with the offensive, uh, with the defensive lineman. Just taking too long to get that looping end all the way back around. Justin Rogers in coverage that time as uh, Dean picks up the 35 yard gain puts the ball on the seven so it's first and goal at the uh, seven yard line. Furby left side Furby gets in for the touchdown. DeAndre Furby his second on senior night. 
Furby had a little bit of that Le'Veon Bell in there. Had that stutter step, allow that hole to open up and develop. Ended up creating a nice little path all the way into that black end zone. Watch him here as he takes his stutter step, lets the play develop. Ultimately watching number 97 Ortega go ahead and jump inside, biting on one of the paths. So Furby gets his second uh, rushing touchdown of the ball game, the uh, most points scored in a single quarter by the Hilltoppers this year. They're at 26. Rinella on to shoot for number 27 as one of the miners down at about the uh, two or three yard line, banged up. And as you said, Mike Cox can ill afford to lose yet another player. So he's paper thin on the defensive side of the football, and it's going to be. One of the big guys, too, uh, Denzel Chukakwelu. Six foot four, 290 pounder. He's been playing well, too. I know some of these guys have had a little bit of spotty performances, but apparently, number 11 has been doing a great job so far for this defense of the last couple weeks. So here's Alex Rinella. Trying to drill yet another extra point here in the first quarter for the Hilltoppers. Line drive right down the middle, and we've got a 27 uh, 0 ball game here in Bowling Green. After the INT, another impressive drive. Yeah, seven plays, 79 yards, taking about two minutes and 55 seconds off the clock. But yes, ladies and gentlemen, we are still in the first quarter. 27 0. Western Kentucky's leading UTEP right now with still a minute and 28 to go. And the Hilltoppers came into the ball game averaging just 18 points a game. I like the way that the nose guard right now is getting pinned inside by both the center and the left guard. That's Tyler Witt and Seth Yost going ahead and climbing up to that middle linebacker as well, getting up top of that second level, occupying Jamar Smith. But great run, great stutter step, Le'Veon Bell style. I like it. Too bad Le'Veon Bell is not making 14 and a half million dollars this year and a forfeiting his season. <laughs> 14 and a half. Mike. What's that all I about? don't know what you're paying you here, but 14 and a half million dollars is a lot of money. Roethlisberger said he was texting him last week and never not even crickets. a response. Yeah, yeah, response. Not even a response. Well, Janiel and uh, Reddick's the deep end again uh, for the Miners says Rinella gets ready to kick off again for Western Kentucky here with a minute 28 to go still in the first quarter. Janiel at the three. Daniel over the 20, spins 25, 30, and he's still on his feet, and he's finally driven out of bounds at the what about the 30-yard line, depending on the spot uh, coming up to make the stop that time on the kickoff. Rex Henderson, Adam Kraus. Uh, Rex Henderson was on that back of his right now, bringing him to the ground. So it's a 31-yard return. <laughs> I had four. Oh, I see. I see. I'm sorry. Got double, double, double numbers. Number 40. Thanks for correcting that. You see, Western Kentucky, uh, they've got four on the resume this year, four three point losses. Right now, leading at 27 0 on senior night. Yeah, that doesn't look to be a problem tonight, Mike. Jones. Oh, it's picked off again. Unbelievable. What a play. My Unbelievable. Goodness. Four picks so far. Devin Key has his second of the season. Four INTs here in the first quarter for the Hilltoppers. This is unbelievable. Four possessions, four picks. What a beautiful play right there by Devin Key. Going up top, tipping the ball to himself, and still having the concentration and the athleticism after he goes to the ground to find that football. Poor Coach Dimble cannot do anything right right now. Just one of those nights. You see the frustration on his face, too. Wow. With all the good teams they've had here, this is the 10th uh, most points in a quarter in their 100-year history. Of course, we mentioned uh, their 10th year playing the FBS level, and uh, Duncan with great field position again. But what an INT that was, on. Huh? That was impressive. Flat on his back, Furby, the fifth-year senior. Pounds his way inside the 40 down to the uh, 39. So on senior night, something tells me we're going to see a lot of number 32 tonight. And at this point, they don't know who to go to as a quarterback as well. 
UTEP, who do they go to? Is it going to be the, the 55, 60% Loxley, or are they going to have to go back to their quarterback, Jones, who just threw that last pick? Well, we saw Ryan Metz throw for 313 and a couple of touchdowns against North Texas, but he's banged up. He's out for the season. Appleberry. No, Duncan, nice fake. He still has it. Goes deep, and it's knocked away that time. Beverly, Kalon Beverly uh, in coverage for the Miners. If you take a look at what's going on right now with some of the play calling, a lot of rolling, misdirection. They even tried the old throwback to the backup quarterback. It seems like they're having real, real good fun right now with that offensive game plan. And a pin in that arm, too. Could have possibly got a little bit of the yellow laundry on the field. Lucky Jackson uh, looking for his second touchdown catch. So Duncan goes back to work. A third down play, third and six at the 39 yard line. Twin receivers to the top. That's where Duncan wants to go. Here comes the heavy rush. And uh, Duncan makes something out of nothing, gets some maybe two on the play. But See, on, a fourth down. On, a, on a night when nothing is going right offensively, you have the opportunity right there. You saw Hodgkins in the backfield. He's upset with himself right now. That should have been a sack, possible loss of around seven yards on that play. Just opportunities right now, even when they're presented, the few and far between, UTEP doesn't seem to be capitalizing on it. Well, it's going to be the final play of the first quarter. Your thoughts quickly before we go to break. Well, to tell you the truth, I think Coach Dimmel might have to go ahead and find out what's going on with that ball and find out if there's magnets inside of it. And at the other end, see what kind of gloves that Western Kentucky's wearing because it seems like that ball is very attracted to the defense of Western Kentucky. Well, good start for Mike Sanford and Clayton White, the defensive coordinator, has to be pleased. 27-0, we're heading for the second quarter here in Bowling Green. Back at Western Kentucky, and uh, the Hilltoppers are hitting on all cylinders right now for the 27-0 lead, and defense, the name of the game, uh, four INTs already. Yeah, we saw Holt with the tip right there. Then that was a gimme right there between those two defenders. That was a nice earned one right now. And then here's the beautiful play right now, the last interception by Key, tipping the ball to himself. Mike, this is the first four interception game since Marshall back in 2014. And Western Kentucky ended up winning that game 67 to 66. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm not sure if that's going to happen, but uh, they might get the 67 tonight. They keep playing this way. Last week, the Miners scored 22 of their 32 in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to play catch up again here. First play of the second quarter now. Hilltoppers with the football at the 37 yard line of UTEP. Duncan steps up and fires right over the middle. <laughs> Mike Juan Dean took it away from Kyle Fortenberry. Fortenberry's thinking, hey, that, that was my ball. <laughs> <laughs> it's always good when they get a little greedy to go ahead and get after that football. But you shouldn't have two wide receivers in the same zone. That's the one of the plays that I'm sure the head man's going to go ahead and say, why are my receivers in the same location? But I like the max protection that they got up front as well, not allowing any of the defensive unit to get anywhere near Duncan, allowing him to sit in there and deliver that football. He seems like he's back to that form that we saw at the end of that FIU game, too. Very confident, standing real tall, delivering strikes. 29 on the last play to Mike Juan Dean. Appleberry bounces to the outside. He's inside the five-yard line and drives down to the three. Finally uh, driven out of bounds uh, by Nick Needham. The senior out of the Buena Park, California, coaching staff saying that uh, they can't ask for any more from Nick Needham. Yeah, he's continuously giving you exactly what you need from one of your starting corners. Team leader, got 10 tackles versus middle 10. Great, great character. You know, it's one of those leaders on the team that not necessarily vocal, but always leading by example. Yeah, he had 10, and uh, Hodgkins had 14. Third time this year, the Miners have had two players with double digits tackles. And, uh, some of the bigger games too. Fortenberry. Well, wow, Fortenberry uh, tripped up. That big number uh, 55. That's Mike Soda, who's moved from second string to first string now with the Miners. You see him using some of that size that Furby brings down near the goal line. When they get inside that five-yard line, I know they brought in Appleberry on that fake toss on the other end of the field. 
but it seems like the common theme right now is once they're down in there, they use Furby, that big body, to go ahead and bruise them up. Third and goal at the four-yard line. Furby, the fifth-year senior, already with a couple of rushing touchdowns, still in the backfield with Duncan. They ended up switching up that mismatch, too, as well. They had one of the linebackers covering Lucky Jackson. Duncan wants to fire it, and there's going to be a penalty flag dropped. No flag dropped, but it looked like... No, it was both ways. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be a firm believer right now that both those two young men were going at each other, pushing and shoving. You can see a lot of hand contact going back and forth prior to the play, grabbing, <laughs> pulling. <laughs> Yeah, Needham might have got away with one right I there. I think so, right in front of the official, too. So it's going to be fourth and goal. That's going to bring on the kicking team. Alex Ranello, five for eight with a long of 41. That may be one of those ones where the backfield judge is going to go ahead and say, I owe you one. Might have to make up for that one at the end of the game here. This one from 22. Should be a chip shot. And it is. And so Ranello. Now six of nine, puts three more on the board. Still have 12 minutes and 58 seconds to go before halftime. Mike Sanford now with a 30 to nothing lead on Dana Demo. Well, two games to go in the 2018 season. Uh, right now, Western Kentucky uh, looking for the first conference win up by 30 in the second quarter. As we take a look at uh, Mr. Romberg's pick for player of the year. Yeah. Hard to argue that. 22 touchdowns, averaging almost 115 yards. And it's, and it's hard to believe that FAU is struggling the way that they are, too, as well. And I imagine it's probably because of the one-dimensional offense that they got going on right now. The fact that he's got 22 touchdowns. My goodness. Well, Mike Sanford, 198 yards of total offense in that first quarter. They come in averaging about 311. And Ranella getting ready to kick off again as uh, Reddick saying Junio back to receive the kick. I know Mike Cox said they're paper thin as far as depth on the defensive side of the ball, but the uh, the, the turnovers, four picks, certainly haven't uh, helped their cause. Janiel thought about it, hesitated, then he finally brings it out. He's not going to get past the 17-yard line. Well, he thought about uh, taking a knee and taking it out to the 25-yard line. Instead, because he was playing quarterback. See the last scoring drive, just 39 yards. His field position has been uh, obviously in the favor of Western Kentucky today. Just trying to find a way to get something going. We thought the last drive that they had something going. They ended up getting about 30 or 40 yards of field position, and then all of a sudden, Come up with another interception. Kai Loxley uh, back at quarterback. He's thrown two picks. Brandon Jones has thrown a couple. So you mentioned earlier, uh, maybe they took him out to clear his head. We'll see if uh, his head is clear now. Running on the uh, the left side and uh, runs into a wall. And that wall by the name of uh, Julian Lewis. Fifth year senior out of Madison, Alabama. Offensive coordinator for UTEP, Mike Canales, says they feel they have some pretty good players, but they're missing that uh, that playmaker on the outside. And as far as quarterbacks, uh, he's got a 6'4", 6'5", quarterback out of Houston coming in next year. Says he can uh, throw it pretty well. Boxley moves out of the pocket, fires, and the intended receiver was Eric Brown, at least uh, four or five feet over his head. Well, you can see right now what's going on on the defensive unit for Western Kentucky is they're basically playing man coverage because they don't feel that anybody could beat them one on one. Sometimes they're bringing the safety down in the box too to kind of dare them to go ahead and have Wadley rush all over them. As so far, it seems like they're pretty good when it comes to the picks, and Wadley's not gaining much yards on the ground either. Third and long, third and nine now for the Miners, and the last thing they want to do is give the football back to Western Kentucky. They're going to go ahead and put Eli Brown on the end of the line of scrimmage right now and rush that left tackle. Loxley wow. ends up getting the sack. Goes down in a hurry. And the Hilltoppers uh, get their 20th sack this year. Like I was talking about on the inside, outside of the line of scrimmage upon him and then also D'Angelo Malone getting a piece of that sack as well. Working one-on-one. -on -one. I don't know how you let 
Eli Brown, 215 pounds, go ahead and speed rush you around the edge like that when you're one on one. Eli Brown, a Kentucky transfer and a local star, played at Warren East High School right here in Bowling Green. So the Miners will have to kick almost from their own end zone. Mitchell Crawford punts it uh, just past the 50, and Drell Green calls for the fair catch at the 49 yard line. So the ball's in Western Kentucky territory, but Brett's a great field position again. It just seems like it's been the story all night long. I think the first two or three possessions were inside the 25 yard line, the red zone for Western Kentucky. And getting a couple other picks just across the 50, it's just, it just makes play calling so much easier. Not only the fact that you only need 25 yards to get in the end zone, but just that play calling sheet not only increases the confidence of your offensive line up front, the continuous scoring and now it seems the kids are having fun. That's the best part about this when when you're up 30 to nothing right now and you just got past the first quarter. These young men are having fun. Now they're starting to experiment a little bit with some of their technique. Well Mike Sanford said it's all about the seniors this week. Duncan play action flush from the pocket and he's going to run out of bounds at about the 50 maybe just inside the 50. It'll be second in about eight maybe nine for the Hilltoppers and how I know coach Woods the offensive line coach right now for Western Kentucky is doing a great job is you can see them working together a lot better say if the left tackle gets beat the left guard is right there on his hip to go ahead and help him out I just saw that down at the bottom with the two right tackle and right guard these guys are playing well together man you're starting to see what we saw a couple of years back when you had guys like lamp and guys starting for 35 36 consecutive games. Yeah, they were loaded up front and they had some pretty good skill position players as well. Duncan had trips to the near side and this one is batted away. Coming across the field to make the uh, the defensive play is Kahani Smith, a senior out of Los Angeles. Kalon Beverly also in uh, coverage. You look at Beverly and uh, Nick Needham, uh, they've combined for 53 uh, passes broken up. Needham has 32. That's number one all time at UTEP. So it's a rare third down play now for Western Kentucky third and eight at the forty nine. Duncan feels the pressure flush from the pocket he's going down. And he's wrestled down by uh, Sione uh, Tupo a true freshman from Allen Texas and Tupo gets his first sack of the year and it's going to bring up a punting situation. That was a big sack too, Mike a lot of yards taken off the board there nonstop keep going keep going as an offensive lineman you see Pate right there as your right tackle kind of give it up on the play you never know when your quarterback has gotten rid of that football. So until you hear that whistle you got to keep moving your feet keep pass blocking because clearly Tupo is able to see where that quarterback is and if he's not stopped then you can't stop. Here's Ranella averaging 37 uh, recently named the Ray guy national punter of the week when he averaged 48. Janiel standing back at the 20 yard line it's a short but high kick and Janiel no fair catch looking for a, a wall he's got it gets to the edge up to the 30 yard line before he runs out of bounds. Great block right there phenomenal block by UTEP. By old number 15 right there did a great job. We see Jernigan right now. He's breathing pretty heavy. He might have got the wind knocked out of him. That's who that block was on. You'll see it right now coming on the left hand side of your screen. Watch this block get set up on Jernigan mm. right there. Yeah above the waist too. That's uh, once you know it uh, the roster doesn't have a 15 on it for UTEP. Yeah that's awesome. Super excited to look down at my card and not have a number 15 on it. Look, Quinn Jernigan uh, down on the field now for Western Kentucky. 9.43 to go before halftime. We've got a 30 nothing Western Kentucky lead. Conference USA Football on BN Sports is brought to you by Ice Cold Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville. Well, there's a reason why Jernigan didn't know where this block was coming from was because Calvin Brownholtz out of California, the backup quarterback is not even listed on their roster that we got sitting up here right now. But my goodness, they know who he is now. They're going to have to have their head on a swivel for old number 15 coming downhill. I guess they didn't list him. He's their secret weapon. <laughs> Evidently. And he's a quarterback, too. So, I mean, maybe uh, with all the interceptions they've thrown, maybe you should get a shot 
Maybe, maybe check his birth certificate, make sure he's uh, of age, too. Loxley wants to go deep, looking for, and this one's almost picked off. And uh, the intended receiver that time is going to be Kenan Foster. Yeah, I think it was Kenyon Foster that was down there. Great play right there by Deontay Ruff, and I like the way that he waited as well to get up top. Once again, it seems like he might be getting into that drill. We're finding the high point of that football. You know, Brett, I, I paused because number 11, Eric Brown, was also in the same geographic area. Foster averaging 17 yards a catch. That's tops on the team. Loxley, this time looking for Brown. And a little miscommunication. Loxley really not even close. He's flustered right now, Mike. You can tell by his body language. He's talking to himself a little bit right now. I can see him too. And now he's kind of chirping it up with his wide receiver right now, explaining to his wide receiver what he needed to do on that play. Eric Brown was the one that was outflanked right there. Last year in junior college, threw for over uh, 2,200 yards and 20 touchdowns. Ran for 20, so he had 40 touchdowns. And uh, best passing this year 194 yards against New Mexico State and 193 in a win against Rice. Whoa! Great play right there. Again, it's a Eli Brown. Oh, my. They ended up having the three down linemen, and they were showing the blitz up front, having Ben Holt and Eli Brown up into those A-gaps. Then they ended up bailing back to go ahead and show that they're not coming. But then once they realized that Loxley was holding that football a little bit too long, the closing speed of Eli Brown was phenomenal right there. Loss of six on the play. You know and what they're doing right now, Mike? They're waiting for the guards to turn their back. You saw DeHaro right there, their left guard turn and go to help that left tackle. Once they see that guard's eyes. Wow, look at this low kick. It's a good thing it takes a minor bounce. And Green picks it up, and he's drilled at the 45-yard line. Awat uh, coming up on the uh, the punt coverage team and gets a good shot on Green. I like this strategy. I, I remember seeing this strategy quite a bit. And they, they teach this at the next level as well in the NFL is once you go ahead and give that bluff up front with those linebackers, you put them in the line of scrimmage. So now you have the two uncovered guards thinking that they're going to be helping their center against that blitzing linebacker. Then all of a sudden, you bail those two linebackers away from the line of scrimmage. Guards think they have nothing to do other than to go out and help their tackles. Next thing you know, they turn their eyes away from those linebackers, and in come the linebackers. As long as that quarterback is holding that football, man, they're in trouble. Well, Drell Green gets it up to the 47. So once again, Stephen Duncan with great field position. First time since 2010, there'll be no postseason for the Hilltoppers, but they're enjoying themselves on senior night. Up by 30. Little pitch. And Samuel got back to the line of scrimmage. And it'll be second and 10. Right now, they had that guard pulling. Right now, Meredith was trying to pull out and get on the outside. He's got to square his shoulders to the line of scrimmage and kind of cut down on the gap that you had right now from that blitzing linebacker coming in behind him making that tackle. DeAndre Furby in the backfield, the fifth-year senior with uh, Stephen Duncan. Play action, Duncan near side. Jernigan with another catch inside the 40 down to the 35 yard line. Beverly finally dumps him after another big gain uh, for the Hilltoppers. Jernigan's finding holes in this defense right now because they're going to zone. They're allowing the wide receivers to go ahead and catch the football, but they're trying to eliminate the yards after catch. But clearly they found the mismatch with number nine, Hodgkins, going against Jernigan. 17 on the last play. Duncan uh, wants to match that here. Still on his feet. Duncan inside the 15 yard line. Finally wrestled on, and there's uh, penalty flags all over the field. Looked like a Nick Needham was uh, holding on to the legs, and Duncan <laughs> wanted to get out of that, uh, that semi scrum. Not sure what the penalty flags. They came out in a hurry, though. Gain of 23 on the run. Oh, he's hyped. Old number 10 starting to bark a little bit. Need him uh, from up here. It looks like maybe with uh, Duncan barking, <laughs> maybe need him gave him a little bit of the business. Well, you know what? We got Honestly, I, I I would normally be able to tell you what was going on, but I was so busy watching Jernigan block on that play, he ended up putting a nice little block. 
on old number four, Harrell, end up knocking him the over. The result of the play is a first down. During the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 15 of the offense. Oh. It's a 15 yard penalty for the end of the run. That is his first towards disqualification. Wow, number 15 of the offense. Once again, number 15 is the magic number. Uh, they've got uh, the only 15 uh, to Corian Darden, the defensive player for Western Kentucky. So I'm not quite sure who that went against. Well, if you're playing the Kentucky lottery tonight. Maybe Ben 16, maybe Jernigan got tossed. Go ahead, go ahead and play number 15 tonight. Well, Jernigan's still on the field. I think they're going to have to go ahead and huddle back up and figure out what's going on here. Well, they're ready to play, and again, no 15 on the offense for Western Kentucky. Jernigan was called, but he's still on the field here. That's Jernigan in motion right now. So the, the officials obviously missed it, and Jernigan uh, getting away with one. Duncan fires over the middle. This one's going to fall incomplete. Intended for uh, Mike Juan Dean at about the 22. Oh my goodness. So not only Jernigan. Oh yeah, oh, you can't yeah. do that. You can't stand over top of somebody. Oh, but, but you know what? That's a defensive lineman. And if your wide receiver is only weighing in at 210 pounds is knocking your big CJ Reese defensive lineman on his behind. That's exciting right there for a wide receiver coach to get back in that film room and see that. Jernigan uh, glanced over at the sidelines. Of the unsportsmanlike conduct, that's his first. So I guess he wouldn't be ejected from the game the anyway. But he's having a night tonight, though, Mike. He's playing out of his mind. If he's getting involved, not only in, 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 the, in the points on the board situation, but he's also out there leading blocker for his quarterback sometimes and the running backs. He's playing tonight. Well, another penalty. Yeah, this one, uh, Jordan Meredith, the Richard sophomore from Bowling Green. Guilty of the infraction. So now they have a, a second and 15 back at the 33 yard line. So they're going backwards right now with 717 to go before halftime. Single coverage up top right now with Jernigan one on one. He's got cushion. Duncan wanted to go there. Instead, he comes underneath. And it's going to be lucky Jackson pushes his way down to about the 17 yard line. Yeah, he definitely wanted to go up top to Jernigan, but. You had Needham up top, giving him a lot of cushion. He tried to sit down on that route. He looked at him for a long time. Then he ended up coming back to his second read. Great job. Great job right there. I know Randall Hill in studio right now, real excited about what's going on at the wide receiver position for this team tonight. Violence, blocking, a little bit of showboating. They got their touchdown dances in. This is all Randall Hill, the thrill football game tonight. <laughs> Charles Arbuckle too is a two-time All-American tight end. I mean, he used to put fear in the, the eyes of defensive backs. Duncan, oh my oh, goodness, tries to run over instead of making a cut. But I guess when you're 6'4", 230, you can do that. He put his head down and he said, "I got no move for you. Me and you, one on one." Mm. Boy, he just runs over Justin Rogers. Rogers. So gain of 18 on the play, and uh, this time. Nothing going at the line of scrimmage. As you see, number 55 make another stop, Mike Soto. Take a peek at Fortenberry after he runs him over here, too. Wanted to ask him if he was doing okay. Yeah. Yeah, he's okay. Well, Duncan's having a good time playing quarterback. What a night tonight for Western Kentucky in this offense. So it's second and goal. Remember, they had. Faced a second and 15 and just moments ago. Appleberry. No, it's going to be Duncan. Duncan sees the end zone, pitches it. Penalty flag. That was a forward pass over the line of scrimmage, so it's going to come back. I like where his head's at, though. Yeah. My goodness. Acrobatic right there. If he was behind the line of scrimmage, this would have been nice and party right there. He didn't want nothing to Hodgkin, so let's not be. Out of our mind, I know it's one thing to go ahead and run over a safety, but you definitely don't want no part of 230 pounds out of Portland, Oregon. A legal forward pass on the offense, number 10. Five-yard forward for the spot of foul, loss of down. Well, like, you down. 
like you said uh, nice thought poor execution <laughs> and the Hilltoppers will try it again on third and third honestly and you're looking at 30 to nothing right now in this ball game and it feels like they're playing recess football like that's that's the feel that you get right now in this stadium people at home watching this game right now they're having so much fun on this football field right now because everything is working even the negative plays that they seem to have very few and far between they overcome that's how good this offense is clicking right now boy Duncan's going down well once again it's number three so uh, Sione Tupo gets his second sack oh Hoskins excuse me I thought it was three it's nine yeah he came blazing off that end they put it up pulling the backside tight end right there Dean I'm sure Dean was the one that was supposed to get across the formation to go ahead and pitch up pick up Hodgkins so Ranella on again it'll be a 38 yard attempt he's already hit from 22 he's six for nine on the year penalty flag dropped at the snap If it goes against Western Kentucky, the Hilltoppers kind of shooting themselves in the foot on this drive. Uh, first time they've done that all night. Offside. 55 of no. the defense. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. So Ranella gets to uh, kick it five yards uh, closer as Mike Soda guilty of the uh, infraction for the Miners of UTEP. So this will be a 33 yard kick. For Ranella, the uh, redshirt junior. And Ranella has his uh, second field goal, one from 22, this one from 33. And the Hilltoppers have 33 points on the board. Doesn't it just seem like every single time something bad happens? Something good ends up happening for Western Kentucky. Just when you thought you were going to go ahead and have to kick a long field goal, they give you five more yards. It's 33 to nothing here in Bowling Green, Kentucky, as they're taking on UTEP. Brett Favre, legendary quarterback. Alex Ranella capped off a 33-yard or nine-play 38-yard drive with a 33-yard field goal. Using up four minutes and nine seconds. You take a look at the uh, the last five seasons. How about 15 and 16 back to back conference USA championships. And Jeff Brown of course leaves last year Mike Sanford comes in they go six and six in the regular season. Lost the bowl game and uh, now they're rebuilding. And if you look at the way that UTIP on the other sideline has been doing it as well they've they've gotten a lot better in a lot of their categories. So you see UTIP kind of climbing. Unfortunately, the score doesn't reflect it now, but they've been getting better as a team as well so far here in 2018. Junior with another sh shot at the three. Fumbled the football. Took his eyes off of it. And he's going to have a tough time closing. Or getting to the edge as he's dumped at about the three yard line. Come on, Terry. Your team needs him, my man. Something that is definitely not on his resume of dropping kickoffs like this. And it's kind of hard for watching him get up in his body language and ultimately his disgust for what's going on so far tonight. Somebody needs to go over there and talk to him, get him going a little bit because they're going to need him for another half of football. So uh, Western Kentucky uh, usually starts with a great field position. Dana Dimmel and the Miners now back at their four yard line trailing 33 to nothing. Last year, Western Kentucky beat the Miners 15 to 14. Devin Key comes up to make the stop. On uh, Drayvon Hughes, the senior, that's the first time we've called his name tonight. He gets his first carry. Waxahachie, Texas, huh? <laughs> you took. Back on it, I wanted to say that. Yeah, I was waiting. <laughs> Waxahachie. 
Get this one on the ground again inside four minutes uh, here in the first half. I know the people watching at home probably don't want to see gut run up the middle right now at this point in time, but at, th at this rate, it's going to take a little bit more. I imagine they're doing this because they see the safeties that are in the box and they're going to go ahead and try to test them, allow Loxley to throw something down the field a little bit. They also don't like the fact that Eric Brown's running over towards the sideline. He's got his hands out because he doesn't know what's going on. And they're going to move the chains. It was third and short, so they're going to pick up the first down now with uh, 319. Clock is running. So Trayvon Hughes uh, coming off the sidelines. Workhorse on that series of downs. Clearly a big fella, too. He's about 240 pounds coming out of that backfield. Trying to bruise up that defensive unit right now in Western Kentucky. Loxley with twin receivers to the top of your screen. This one's almost picked off. The intended receiver was David Lucero. Yeah, Ruffin almost got himself one right there. And Deontay uh, Ruffin, the sophomore out of Kenner, Louisiana, that would have been his first. Going up top. Mm. The thing is, is you got the safeties that are sitting down in the zone. Devin Key's sitting down there for the run game, the run support. Ruffin's a single high that's over there in the corner, but it's almost like they're just sitting back there waiting to pick these guys off. I don't know if Loxley's not looking the safeties off well enough, but it just seems like they got their number tonight. Loxley just has to get rid of this one. Here's a pick six. Gage Walker. Redshirt sophomore from Tampa has a pick six. His first INT of the season. Number five in the game for Western Kentucky. I'm telling you, I'm looking for Oprah Winfrey in the stands. Because the you get a pick and you get a pick and you get a pick. The five interceptions so far in this first half. My goodness. Pick six. You see him getting flustered right now and just throwing off his back foot, throwing up the ball across the field. Hash all the way over to the numbers. You can't do that. So the Hilltoppers came in at minus two and now they're at plus three on the season. Five picks, 11 on the year now. Kai Loxley is uh, dad, Mike Loxley, the offensive coordinator at Alabama. And the Hilltoppers now with the most points scored in any game this year. Of course, they had 34 in that tough loss to Old Dominion, uh, that crazy loss where they had three untimed plays at the end. And Old Dominion kicked the field goal to beat them. I mean, they had that game wrapped up, or so they thought. Yeah, they've, they've suffered some pretty heartbreaking losses. I know you take each one of them as a learning lesson, but to have four year games within three points, you know, that's that's only a matter of going back and looking at the film and seeing one or two plays that you could have done differently throughout the football game to change that outcome. Well, Julian Bowers now joins uh, Terry Janiel as the deep man as Alex Rinella gets ready to kick off again for Western Kentucky. 40 zip, 242 to go before halftime here on senior night. Ten seniors, the, the highs and lows of experience. Well, back to back conference USA championships. And of course, this year, still looking for that first conference win. Only win coming against Ball State so far this year. Janiel backs up. He's inside the five. He takes it at the three. Clean catch this time, and uh, this time he gets some running room. Penalty flag drop. He's all the way up over the 30-yard uh, line, and he's up to the 40. So Janiel patiently waited for his blocks, and he gets up over the 40-yard line. Again, penalty flag way back at the 22. That's going to be a block. But that flag traveled about 12 Dirty yards. Return. Illegal block in the back. Number 33, the return team. 10 yard penalty from the spot. First down. Billy Williams, our referee. In this conference, USA. Yeah, the one thing that coaches will always teach you, you saw him come into your screen right now and just flash in there, but what they always see is you got to see the whites of the eyes of the guy that you're about to block. 
If you can't see his eyes, you shouldn't touch him. You got to put your hands up. You got to run by him, scream, do whatever you got to do to let him know that you're around him. But unless you're seeing the whites of that player's eyes, more than likely, you're probably going to get a call for a block in the back. So Loxley goes back to work. Three picks he's thrown so far. Nine for the season now against uh, three touchdowns. The last one, a pick six by Gage Walker. Your side, and this one's incomplete. I just don't like the way right now I'm looking at number one, and I'm watching him set up in the pocket. His feet are too happy. He's not setting himself. Even times when he has plenty of space and time to throw the football, he's just not resting. He's not he's not setting his feet and delivering strikes in there. He's got his feet standing side by side. It's, it's almost happy feet in there. Second and ten. They'll keep this one on the ground. Wadley, the ball carrier. Quadres coming off that 99 yard game last week. I haven't called his name much tonight. They're second, 30 seconds. So number 25 there, Messiah White. Uh, he and DeAndre Ferris were high school teammates on this field winning a state championship a few years back. Now both fifth year seniors playing their final home game here in front of the Western Kentucky fans. Mike Sanford couldn't say enough. Good things about the fans that have stuck with the team this year during the rebuilding and the downtime. Yeah, it's been a little rough for the people here in Bowling Green, Kentucky, trying to cheer on their team. But tonight it seems like they might be getting a nice little reward as a senior night to send some of these guys off tonight with big, big win. Uh, and I know we're only in the second quarter, but it's 40 to nothing. And as long as these guys continue at the pace that they are playing at right now, it could be a rough ride home for Coach Dimmel and his team all the way back over to the western part of Texas. Yeah, I wonder when the last time the Miners were down 40 to nothing in the first half. See the 10 seniors on the roster. 15 and 16, and 12 and 2, and 11 and 3. And some of those guys are playing in the National Football League right now. And Hilltoppers have what, eight on NFL rosters? Southern Miss leads Conference USA, followed by Louisiana Tech and then Western Kentucky. As far as having uh, alumni on NFL rosters this year. Boxley swings it out. And they're coming up to make the stop again is Eli Brown. Eli Brown is having a good game. It's it's blood in the water right now, Mike. That's what's going on. It, it's watch watch the quarterback here set up and throw this football. I'm I'm not exactly a quarterback whisperer, but I'm watching him almost lethargically delivering a football. He's not authoritative in there. His arm's not coming over the top. He's not stepping into his throws. And what looks to me, it's a possible knee situation right now. I don't like the way that he's running off of the football field. I don't like the way he stands around the huddle at this point in time. That 55, 60% healthy situation is really affecting the way that he's performing tonight. Number 11, Eric Brown, also went off the field for the Miners, Brett. And uh, again, uh, Loxley, is, the coach has said, only playing at about 55%, which I'm actually surprised that he's playing at all at 55%. But uh, well, you remember what it was like when we were out there in El Paso the last time we covered him. A little dinged up again, calling the coach throughout the week, saying, Coach, I'm good to go, I'm good to go. And, you know, showing back up at practice, and, and the young man can barely walk around. So. He, he definitely has the will and the want, but uh, but but the health situation right now with him is is, is a question mark. Yeah, Loxley with a pair of 100-yard uh, rushing games this year for UTEP, but obviously uh, not the same player as he was earlier this year. Green takes it at the 45-yard uh, line with the fair catch, and the Mitchell Crawford, the junior from Australia, has been kicking uh, just in front of his end zone all night long. What's interesting to me right now is I'm looking at some of these offensive statistics right now. If you if you're just tuning into this football game and you're seeing 40 to nothing with two minutes left in the first half, you would kind of figure, hey, we've got a lot of offense going on right now. Big offensive night tonight for Western Kentucky. When really they have 94 yards rushing 
and 183 yards passing. So you're only looking at 277 yards right now tonight so far with a score of 40 to nothing. Defensive performance tonight, you know, handily they've been giving up some pretty breadbasket interceptions, but my goodness, they've earned a few as well. Well, the defense giving uh, Duncan and company a great field position. Duncan throws. Running to the left throws back to the right and uh, Justin Rogers runs out of real estate that falls incomplete. Jernigan was the intended receiver for Western Kentucky it'll be a uh, second and ten with a minute fifty three to go before halftime. So Stephen Duncan came in in the final possession against Charlotte went seven of ten eleven play seventy five yard drive ended with a touchdown and came off the bench against Ball State. Scored on three of four drives. Whoa. Now there's a lot of beef uh, coming up to hit you as Chris Richardson. Yeah. Had that screen development right there. The only problem I had with that screen right now was that center Yost. He needed to go ahead and get down the line of scrimmage a little bit flatter and then turn up because he ended up missing the block that ultimately made the tackle. Third and five. Duncan pump fakes and Duncan's going to go down again. Another sack for the Miners. And again, it's a Hodgkins number nine. He came in with four. He's got two tonight. Boy, Brett, you look at uh, Hodgkins. You tap it up. They're set. 30 seconds of the top three tackles per game in Conference USA. I mean, it's interesting. Of course, we have Ben Holt over on Western Kentucky side, but uh, you've got Sage Lewis at FIU at 10.6, Hodgkins at 10.5, and Ben Holt at 10.4. So that's quite a battle going on as far as who's going to win that crown as tackles per game in Conference USA. I just like the toughness right now walking off that football field. I ended up watching Hodgkins going off the field and he's in some pain now. He sat on that field for a couple seconds, gathered himself. You can clearly see right now he's got something going on with that left arm of his. But both telling the trainer to get out of my way, man. I don't need anything. I'm good to go. You had mentioned 14 tackles last week. His high this year is 15 against UAB. And you see coming in with 105 tackles before the game started. So Alex Ranella. This one goes off the side of his foot. But it takes a hilltopper bounce inside the 15 yard line. It's going to be down eventually. <laughs> Eventually at the 10. 67 seconds to go before halftime, and uh, it's going to be interesting to uh, see what Dana Dimmel, what, what his talk at halftime will be to his minors. I have never been in a situation like this before where I had a head coach stand in front of me and try to explain to me why we're down 40 points at halftime, but it's evident. Everybody else knows what's going on right now on offense. They can't win right now. At any point, at any juncture, whatever they're trying to do, run the football, pass the football, not saying the final outcome they can't win. I'm saying that they're just not doing anything right now that is turning out to be a positive result. Every everywhere they throw the football, it seems to be an interception. Now they keep it on the ground. That victory against Rice for the Miners snapped a 13 game road skid. If they won tonight, it'd be the first back to back road win since 2005, but that obviously is not going to happen now with a 40 to nothing deficit they'll have to climb out of. It'll be miraculous. That'll be one for the one for the ages if they can come back here in the second half. Picked up five on the first play, so it's second and five with 33 seconds to go. This uh, could be the final play of the first half. As they head for the locker room and try to regroup. Coming up uh, at halftime, of course, Jeremy St. Louis, Randall Hill, Charles Arbuckle back in the studio. Here's Wadley. Wadley gets up uh, close to the uh, 20 yard line, but that'll probably do it in the first half, just 12 seconds to go. Yeah, they're heading to the sideline. They're heading to the, to the tunnel right now. So that's the final play of the first half, and uh, Brett Romberg, your thoughts after 30 minutes. I think right now it's Coach Dimmel's job to just try to keep these guys' spirits up when you go into that locker room. Strategy at this point in time, what kind of adjustment can you make? You got to stand there and tell them, don't throw the football, don't turn the ball over. Uh, right now, I think it's just all about keeping guys' spirits positive. Slowly but surely, having one play after another play, trying to gain a little bit of ground 
and make up some of that 40 point deficit but again it's just all about the spirit that these guys are gonna have to come out of the tunnel with in the second half hilltopper defense came in with six ints uh, they're up to 11 now five picks including a pick six in the first half and coming up on the other side we head down to miami the bn sports halftime report with jeremy st louis randall hill and charles arbuckle 40 to nothing western kentucky with the lead at halftime on senior night 2018. Time at Hutch and Smith Stadium in Bowling Green, Kentucky, and it is the host Hilltoppers all over the UTEP Miners by a score of 40 to nothing on senior night. Well, this is the performance that I think Mike Sanford and company, all Hilltopper fans, have been waiting for uh, in this particular matchup. But what a start for Western Kentucky in this game. Yeah, it seems like if you're UTEP, you're give it away, give it away, give it away now. I mean, they just kept giving the ball away. Yeah. And I mean, we need more song references <laughs> sir, between Gleason Mike and you. L uh, Kai Lockley, excuse me, I'm, I'm referencing his dad, started off the game doing that. And then it just kept compounding. We yeah, talked about them running the football, but they, they now have to throw. And Western Kentucky expects them to throw. But if he's playing at 55, 60 percent, why game. is he even in the game? He shouldn't be in the game. And no. that, that's point blank because, uh, you know, West Kentucky, they're they're capitalized. They're doing exactly what they should be doing. And 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 they are just the I guess reaping the benefits of, of those balls being thrown to them. <laughs> Let's look at the highlights from the first half. An unbelievable start for the Hilltoppers, really Kyle Oxley and, and Brandon Jones, the two quarterbacks for the Miners. I mean, they they yeah. completed more passes to Western Kentucky's yep. defenders uh, than they did to their own receivers. Western Kentucky get off to the hot start. They take the ball, go right down the field and score. So they're automatically up six right away, miss the extra point, and then UTEP really starts shooting themselves in the foot. Yeah, I mean, it just it really is one of those situations where right away, the first two possessions they had were pick interceptions right away. Yeah. And I was thinking they were going to run the football. Western Kentucky did a nice job of taking advantage of those opportunities. 40, uh, 30 points off of turnovers for Western Kentucky. So without those turnovers, you're looking at a 10-0 ball game at halftime. You want another song reference to the roots when things fall apart? Well, I guess you can say UTEP was singing that loud and clear, and Western Kentucky was saying we'll capitalize. One of the things that strikes me, though, uh, Randall, is that Loxley is throwing the ball when he doesn't need to he should just go down with it. Yeah, he should go down with it or, you know what, give the fans a souvenir. Throw the ball way out of yeah. bounds and you're not going to get in trouble uh, with that. But you can't throw the ball in the, in the play of uh, uh, a field where defensive backs are going to have the opportunity to get the ball and have a, a, a pick six. And, and Brett referenced it too during the game. I think they really did a nice job of just saying, okay, we know you're going to try to run the football. And for whatever reason, uh, UTEP came out and said, no, we're determined to throw the football. And e every time they put the ball in the air, they were ball hawks by Western Kentucky. And for Stephen Duncan, I mean, here he is getting the start for Western Kentucky. And, I mean, this is an ideal situation for his confidence as a yeah. young quarterback coming into this. You're getting all of these chances with your offense on the field and able to convert on most of them. Yeah, he was 14-21 uh, to 21 on the game so far, two touchdowns. And he was able to run the football effectively when he needed to. And here's Western Kentucky turning more points in off of turnovers as Furby goes in once again for the Hilltoppers. Those shiny helmets, I told you. <laughs> shiny helmets, yeah. The problem know. also, guys, is that your defense, oh, that, that was a nice interception there. Your defense, if you're UTEP, they see this, and it's awful difficult to keep getting on the field and having to try to bail your offense out. Yeah. And you hope if you're UTEP, that you these guys, guys keep, down. yeah, yeah, that's exactly what you're doing. Well, and one of the things too, and, and you heard Mike and Brett refer to it, this is the really bad one. Yeah. I mean, he just lobs it up there, really. I mean, I understand you're inside your own 10 yard line, but still eat the football versus giving up the six. Sometimes I've seen this happen though. When you have two with bad things start happening, they just keep happening. And for whatever reason, when you go at halftime, you better figure out a way to get something positive going. 14 yards rushing for UTEP, 42 yards passing, 56 total yards. and. As mentioned, Western Kentucky just all over them. The five turnovers have certainly made the difference. Uh, four touchdowns and a field goal off of turnovers as they lead 40 to nothing at halftime over the UTEP Miners. We're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about this game and 
Take a look at the national picture as Quinn Jernigan gets in for Western Kentucky, not having any problems at halftime. Welcome back to the Halftime Show. Let's show you some highlights from other Conference USA action today. 67th birthday for Butch Davis and his FIU Panthers taking on Charlotte. Pick this one up in the second quarter. Charlotte leading 14-13. Napoleon Maxwell from 39 yards out. Scampers in for the touchdown. And FIU have the lead 20-14 at that point. Third quarter, same score. James Morgan, the six-yard touchdown pass to Anthony Jones. Good to see him back and in the end zone. I was going to say that. It's good to see him back from what happened early in the season. 27-14, fourth quarter, FIU up 35-28. Maxwell, 52-yard scamper this time, completing the four-play, 75-yard drive. 42-28 at that point. Panthers win 42-35. They improve to 8-3 and, and tie the school record for wins in a season with their eighth victory. They did it in 2017 and 2011. And next week, they have a chance to better that and put themselves into the Conference USA title game. The other team that they're fighting with for that final spot is Middle Tennessee. They were losers to Western or to Kentucky on this day. Number 17, Kentucky, as it turns out. The Brent Stock still had a great day. 30 of 33 for 293 and three touchdowns. Southern Miss bouncing back after losing in overtime last week to the Blazers. 21-20, they beat Louisiana Tech. Texas A&M up on UAB at this point as they are in the third quarter. 24-7, Marshall shutting out UTSA 23-0 as Frank Wilson's seat does not get any colder. And LSU doing what many would expect uh, against Rice up 28-3 as they are at halftime. All right, let's show you some of the national highlights. West Virginia taking on Oklahoma State 34-31 West Virginia fourth quarter Will Greer rushes outside for the six yard touchdown 10 play 83 yard drive now complete a 10 point lead for the Mountaineers 41-31 there fourth quarter same score line Taylor Cornelius nice fakes the handoff run. and runs it in for the nine yard touchdown for Oklahoma State 41-38 then Cornelius later in the fourth, 11-yard pass to Tylan Wallace. That receiver wanted it. West Virginia led the game until this point, 45-41. Oklahoma State win it. West Virginia drove down to the 15 but couldn't convert. And this is a bad loss, 45-41 final. Here are some other scores. Or, uh, in the national picture, uh, Clemson up 14-6. Maybe that's a little closer than many would expect over Duke. Duke is playing a really tough. Daniel Jones back. He's actually doing a nice job. And what happened with Clemson is they're not able to really uh, get things going on third down. Michigan winners over Indiana. UCF up 14-6 on Cincinnati. And it is Texas beating Iowa State 14-3. Hey, got to give some props to the Citadel. They were tied with the number one team in the nation at halftime, 10-10. But Alabama doing Alabama things, yep. uh, running away as they win it 50-17. Uh, to 17. Okay, time for us to take another break. But when we come back, we'll talk about second half adjustments. I don't know if you're adjusting too much for Western Kentucky. <laughs> for Dana Dimmel, I think you're adjusting quite a few things for UTEP. They are down 40 points to the Hilltoppers. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Watching the BN Sports College Football Halftime Show at the break in Bowling Green. It is the home side, Western Kentucky, up 40 to nothing on UTEP on senior night. We all took Western Kentucky for this one, right? That was how it all played out. I did. I, I picked the shiny things. I did not. I'll be honest. Yeah, you it's picked the shiny things. Smarter than the average bear. Yeah. Hey, boo boo. Not stranger okay. things, shiny things. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so. But obviously, I mean, in terms of second half adjustments, yeah. if you're Dana Dimmel right now, yeah. are you throwing on everybody who hasn't really had a lot of playing time? You may, but you also better adjust the attitudes of whoever's playing. We saw it even in that we talked about it in the break. Sometimes guys don't look like they're really in it. You better find out who wants to play, who wants to get back on that plane and help you moving forward. Randall, is it 0-0 zero, zero if you're Mike Sanford? <laughs> nah, man, he beating the brakes off of him, man. The <laughs> rotors, the calipers, everything. <laughs> no, listen, but you still have to go out, and, and I, I will see the starters um, probably play one or, one or two series, mm -hmm. and then uh, you're going to probably bring in some of your younger guys yep. uh, who need to get some experience uh, going forward uh, for next year. 
win the half. That would be my advice for Dana Dimmel. Win the half. Hey, hey, win a drive, a series. Yeah, just win point. one, right? Just, just do something positive in this drive. If I'm a coach, I'm saying, look, guys, we can't play any yeah. worse than we did. You better go out there and do something positive. Win your drive. Just go out the first half, that second half, and whatever we do, let's win it. And because Western Kentucky took the ball first, first half, UTEP should get the ball to start the second half. So they get the chance to get on the board. You cannot be yeah. shut out. Uh, in Bowling Green for sure. Certainly, yeah. this is good news for Hilltopper fans and for Mike Sanford. A lot of fans probably going, where has this been all season long? Great to see if you're a Hilltoppers fan. Not so great uh, for UTEP fans. Let's see how the second half goes. Second half action is coming up next. Back out to Mike Gleason and Brett Romberg. Romberg! In Bowling Green. 40 to nothing. Western Kentucky lead. Welcome back to Western Kentucky. That's Kai Loxley right there warming up for the second half. The Miners uh, will get the ball to open up the second half. You see the four INTs in the first quarter, Brett. Five for the first half. Yeah, it just seems like nothing was going right. Every single series that UTEP ended up taking the field, it ended in an interception. Not only just a regular interception, but the majority of them either ended up in the red zone or they ended up for a pick six. So that's why you see the demonstrative number right now being up 40 to nothing coming out of this tunnel. 56 yards uh, total for Dana Dimmel's minors in the first half. But because of the picks, they only had the football nine minutes and 28 seconds. So you can't do a whole lot in nine minutes and 28 seconds. Well, that means that these guys are going to be well rested for next week's game. That's for sure. <laughs> no doubt about that. So UTEP will be home in El Paso. Close out the 2018 season against Southern Miss. Western Kentucky will be on the road at Louisiana Tech. So Western Kentucky, I asked you to, uh, I asked your thoughts when uh, Sanford decided to, uh, they won the toss and they took the football. I was a little bit surprised in that, but they, they drove down 75 yards on their first possession, had the extra point blocked on their first touchdown. But that's about the only negative thing that's happened uh, for Western Kentucky in the entire first half. Yeah, and it seemed like, you know, being 0-6 in the conference, whatever they were doing in the past wasn't working. So why not try something different to go ahead and elect to go ahead and get that possession and open up the game and see if they can create something. See number two there, uh, Terry Janiel, and number eight, Julian Bowers, back to receive the kick here to open up the, uh, the second half. 56 yards of total offense. Miners average about 175 passing yards. They have 42 in the first half. They were four for 15 with five interceptions. Janiel will take a knee, and the Miners will take it at the 25-yard line. So the Miners are trying to uh, rebuild Dana Dimmel's first season. Scored 34 two weeks ago, 32 last week. Now still looking for their first points. I don't think they can uh, erase a 40 to nothing deficit, but uh, they Hope to get something going in the second half. And we talk about that long plane ride back to El Paso where they close next week against Southern Miss. Well, it seems like if the head coach's attitude is as, as contagious as we think it's going to be, Coach Dimmel had nothing but smiles. We went out there to Texas and interviewed him the last time we covered El Paso, Texas. And, uh, and, and it was just nothing but smiles. Every single sentence that he had was, how about this player? And he was like, ah, he's injured. Well, what about that player? Ah, he's, he's injured too. But he would always have a smile on his face, and he said, you know what? I can't come to work every day miserable because it's going to reflect on the way that I'm coaching, my staff, and my players. So as long as they keep that attitude positive, I think they're going to be okay. Well, they were getting better and better and better. It wasn't showing up in the win column, but they certainly had a lot of fight in that game we did against North Texas. Jones gets the start instead of Loxley here to open up the second half. He was... Three for six in that first half with a couple of picks. There's Jones near side. Nice effort by Foster. Uh, Keenan Foster, the junior out of Lake Stevens, Washington. It falls incomplete. Yeah, I like the way that he went ahead and pushed off his defensive back as well. You saw him kind of setting inside right now uh, in terms of his coverage. I think he's trying to play the run a little bit more than they're trying to play the pass, but you see the way that number 15 is going with him to Corian Dart, and he's all over the field with him. So it's second and 10. As Jones looks over at the sidelines, gets the call. 
Quadres widely in the backfield uh, with Jones. Play action. Jones is going down. And that is the senior, Mr. Ben Holt, going ahead and add one to the resume on his big senior send-off. You see Holt on the blitz right now. He's coming through the right-hand side of the screen, just non-stop, finishing, making that tackle. i got to correct myself. Ben Holt's not a senior. But his brother played here. Yeah, his brother. Both of them captains, yeah. ironically. Matter of fact, just the second time that uh, he and Nick for the captains, so one of two sets of brothers as captains at Western Kentucky in the history of their program. Oh, that pocket's just collapsing again on Jones. Nice job of escaping. And Brandon Jones gets up near the 35 yard line. The first down is the 35. Interesting to see Jones want to go ahead and take on the tackler, DeAndre Ferris, right there. One of the team captains for Western Kentucky in this defense. Great escapability right here. The pocket's totally collapsing on him. But what I like is the fact that the offensive linemen continually are blocking. Nobody's taking the playoff. They're finishing. They're trying to give some kind of life to their quarterback. Look at this. In a 15, it's fourth down. They're down by 40. And the ball's on the 34-yard line. Trying to get him to jump. Oh, they're going for it. And it's a pass! And it's complete! Josh Weeks has tripped up at the 30-yard line. So last week, Josh Weeks had four catches for 71. His previous best was 43. Picks up a big gain that time of 38. Yeah, the problem right there is old number 36 was on the end of the line of scrimmage. Kyle Bailey is supposed to have that one-on-one -on -one coverage, but that tight end ended up splitting them and going up the football field and he didn't cover his man. Nice call by the minor coaching staff. <laughs> they pick up 38, going for it on fourth down. Western Kentucky was two for two, going for it on fourth down in the first half. This one's complete to Reddix. Warren Reddix puts his head down and gets down to the 20-yard line. So looks like the Miners have uh, a little bit of life here in the second half, at least. Yeah, going to the tunnel, I was talking about it. They just got to have a positive attitude come on out and do little chunks by little chunks and eventually gain some momentum and take away from that 40-point lead. Miners now with 100 yards of offense. Trips to the top of your screen for Brandon Jones. This one's complete. Far side down to the 11-yard line. And it's complete to uh, Treshawn Wolf, true freshman from Victoria, Texas. I also like the fact that Terry Janiel, their star, is out there on the edge blocking, giving an opportunity for his other wide receivers. You know, Brett, they don't pass for a lot, but they spread it around 15 different receivers on a team that only uh, picks up about 175 yards through the air per game. That was uh, only the sixth catch for the freshman Wolf. And it's first and 10 at the 11 yard line. Jones looking for broke, has it, touchdown. Janiel. So Terry Janiel comes up with a touchdown. That's going to be his third this year. And the Miners down 40 to nothing, open up the second half with a very impressive drive. Yeah, it looked like a little bit of miscommunication going on once it got into the end zone between DeAndre Ferris and Decorian Darden right there, number 15 and 22. Got a little tripped up with each other, giving Janiel the nice wide open opportunity. So Brandon Jones now has rushed for two touchdowns, thrown for two touchdowns, and thrown for two picks. They're going for two, obviously, here. Little fade. Reddix has it. And they have the two-point conversion. Darrell Green was a little bit late to that play right there. Kind of giving him a wide open opportunity. That's that's the sense of urgency that Brandon Jones just had right there. Seven plays, 75 yards, taking three and a quarter off the clock. It's 40 to 8 here in Bowling Green. Conference USA Football on BN Sports is brought to you by Ice Cold Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville. Well, 40 to 8 to Brett. Last week when they scored 22 fourth quarter points, it's one of two things. 
shows that uh, Middle Tennessee either took the uh, foot off the accelerator or the miners had a lot of fight left in them. I got to believe it's the latter. Yeah, I really do believe it's the latter. I watched some of that film as well, and they did. They just never gave up. They had that same attitude that the coaches were talking about going to practice every day, showing up, putting in the hard work and the effort that it's going to take to make this program a lot better. Well, it's a Corey and Darden and the Garland LaFrance back to receive the kick. And it's going to be taken at the goal line. LaFrance spins his way over the 30 uh, yard line. So the true freshman from New Orleans, so with a nice return. And once again, Western Kentucky has decent field position. They've had great field position the whole game. Yeah, it's been. Uh it hasn't been one of the things that they've had to worry about, that's for sure, going into this game, starting inside or near their own end zone. There's that drive you talked about. The Miners seven plays, 75 yards to open up the second half. Janiel gets the scoring strike from Brandon Jones. And the reason why they got that two-point conversion and that touchdown was because little miscommunication and kind of a lazy setup on that defensive backfield area. So Stephen Duncan opens up the second half from the, the gun. It's going to be Samuel. Samuel slips through a nice hole. Up over the uh, 35 to the uh, 36. Nick Needham coming up from the cornerback spot to make the tackle. Duncan in that first half, 14 of 21, a buck 88, two touchdowns with a long throw of 38. Senior day, they're still looking for their first conference win, so I got the funny feeling that Western Kentucky, they don't want to take their foot off the accelerator. Duncan slips through the hands had to rush the pass catchable ball but it uh, just slipped through lucky Jackson yeah he kind of delivered that thing a little bit too hot after trying to avoid getting that ball stripped out of his arm well it's going to be third down after that 75 yard drive but if the miners could force a three and out right now That'd be a great turnaround. That'd be a lot, a lot better start to the second half than it was the first. That's for sure. Pearson in motion to the bottom of your screen now. Duncan from the gun. Here comes the rush. Duncan lets her go, and uh, this one's incomplete. Well, at least they put a hat on the quarterback right there, being a little disruptive. You had both Hodgkins and Tupo over there in that backfield, trying to go ahead and rush the pass. Chris Leach was the intended receiver. Janiel now back to receive the punt. That's got to be the first three and out of the ball game right there for UTEP's defense. <laughs> you think? <laughs> you give up 40 in the first half. <laughs> well, I don't know if you remember last year's game when these guys ended up playing against each other. Last year it was a 15-14 game. UTEP missing three field goals in that game. Well, Janiel holds on to what uh, he was running to uh, by his own teammate. Looks like uh, Justin Rogers barreled into him. Good concentration on Janiel. He holds on to it. And the Miners force the punt. They have the football back with 10 minutes and 34 seconds to go. Third quarter at Western Kentucky. Hilltoppers up 40 to 8. Back in Bowling Green, Kentucky, 40 to 8. Guess what, Brett? There's yet another bowl game uh, coming up on the horizon. Yeah, they ended up going ahead and announcing the new creation of the Myrtle Beach Bowl beginning in 2020. Congratulations nice. to Devin yeah. Singletary, named a semifinalist for the Doak Walker. Three finalists to be named November 19th. The Jack Fox of Rice named a semifinalist for the Ray Guy Award. You might say, hey, Stone Wilson of FIU is averaging 46 yards, the most in the league, but Fox has a long of 76. He's had 21, 50 plus. He's had 23 inside the 20, so I guess that's warranted. So congratulations to both Singletary and Fox. Jones goes up over the middle, has his man. And boy, the Miners look like a different football team. Again, it's number 83, Treshawn Wolf, with a second catch in the second half. Yeah, on top of that, getting right behind that defense. DeAndre Ferris picking on the team captain right there. Beautifully thrown ball in stride. You could notice a difference right now in the quarterback play, the way that Brandon Jones is playing versus the way that Kyle Oxley was playing. I think it's an injury situation right over there on that sideline, the reason why Brandon Jones is in there delivering that football like that. And he delivered for 48 yards on that completion to the freshman uh, Treshawn Wolf. 
Puts the ball at the uh, 30 yard line. Twin receivers to the top of your screen. That's where he wants to go. He fires and it's down on the turf intended for uh, Terry Janiel. Pressure by uh, Jawan Jones, the redshirt freshman from Sugar Hill, Georgia, who happens to have four sacks. That ties the FBS uh, record for freshmen here at Western Kentucky. Coming up, getting the audible call from the sideline. Jones, Reddix, Warren Reddix. Boy, nice job waiting for his block. He took a hit. Boy, Messiah White. White. Reddix pops up. Boy, White comes over full steam, doesn't he? Yeah, that's one of the issues. If you want to go ahead and pivot off that foot and go back into that traffic, you better be prepared. He was prepared. He had his head down, ready to go ahead and take a shot from linebacker Messiah White coming over, screaming as fast as he could. So Brandon Jones after a 75 yard scoring drive now has it down at the 23 yard line and their second series of the second half Wadley spins and he almost spun to freedom but again uh, was it White that met him head on or was it Holt Holt was the one that ended up getting through the defensive lineman and getting into the backfield of UTEP and ended up missing the tackle and you see him clap his hands right there and give the damn call. And then he goes and it retracts and goes ahead and makes that tackle about two or three yards up the field. Here's the formation that they uh, threw the pass. Yeah, it's that same look again. <laughs> Timeout. Yeah, the Miners one for one on fourth down on the year, just a four of 12. 30 seconds. Coming in. So we'll make it five of 13 as I uh, show my math skills. Very impressive. Which are very limited. So the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky. The Miners of UTEP, both one and nine. Both in the rebuilding mode. Todd Stewart, the athletic director here at Western Kentucky. We did not get confirmation on the other uh, story that you talked about that the last two games are very important for this coaching staff. But this obviously has to bode well. If they can keep this up, uh, winning at Louisiana Tech in Ruston uh, is not going to be easy. You know, Brett, even if they win this football game, game they can't uh, ill afford a meltdown here in the second half. And this one's uh, batted away. As the Hilltoppers uh, look for interception number six, Devin Key back there along with Ferris. Ferris playing in his 48th game here for Western Kentucky. Yeah, clearly this ball comes back there, and the quarterback was not even looking to take the snap. I've been in that situation before. That's a nightmare. Luckily, it actually hit the quarterback. Luckily, the center actually snapped a really good snap. And it was stopped by the body of Brandon Jones right there. And all they had to do was bend over and pick it up. But yeah, he, uh, he's got to get ready for that one. I'm going to put the blame on the quarterback, of course. <laughs> yes. As a former center would. Yeah. So the Miners turn it over on downs. They strand, uh, they stall at the 22. Here comes Western Kentucky again. Samuel puts his head down, moves the pile. Wow. He got hit at about the 26. He moves it all the way to the 31 yard line. Nice downhill running play. And he seems like he put his head down right about here. And he not only had Fountainberry over there as well, trying to, or Fortberry, trying to go ahead and help him out and get a couple extra yards. Lucky Jackson. Close to the uh, first down marker. Coming up to make the stop is Nick Needham, along with Kahani Smith. It seems like Needham has that shoulder issue. Remember we were talking about his injury on his shoulder and how the young man continually just plays and plays and plays. And having shoulder issues this season and just giving everything he's got out there. 
Needham, one of the veterans, making his 40th start. Boy, Appleberry, the freshman, running hard, picks up the first down, gets up over the 35 yard line. Yeah, it seems like the game plan right now is to continually run out this clock, keep the ball away from UTEP. So if they're going to continually rotate in their running back situation with Appleberry and Samuel and even bringing Big Ferb in there, it seems like that three headed snake at running back is going to bode well for them grinding down this clock. Speaking of Furby, Furby uh, wrapped up by Trace uh, Mascoro, the sophomore out of Texas. Uh, Furby already with a couple of touchdown runs. And this is final home game as the fifth year senior. Yeah, they're really running this clock out right now. And considering the fact they're looking for their first win, that's a pretty classy move, really, when these players were having a blast. Duncan, play action, has his man. Jernigan, the antenna receiver at the 48 yard line, a little bit high, too high to handle. Kind of sounds like Bob Euchre right there. Kind of high. <laughs> Just a bit outside. <laughs> the kids can't be the only ones having fun either, Mike. We got to be having fun up here in the booth as well. well. I laugh because I grew up in northern Michigan. I heard a lot of uh, poor games, even though I was a Tiger fan. A lot of the radio stations carried the Milwaukee Brewers with Merle Harmon and mm -hmm. Bob Euchre. Duncan fires had a lot of time, and this one is going to be picked. Oh, it's dropped. Kahani Smith, the uh, senior out of Los Angeles, had it. Actually, I'm not, just, I'm not sure how he dropped that one. I think it was Lucky Jackson getting his hand involved in that one, and, and, and Lucky seemed to figure it out as the ball was in the air that he had no hope of actually catching that football. So his first instinct was to go ahead and get involved and knock this ball away. Oh, you're right. Good call. For the Miners of forcing the Hilltoppers to punt again. Rinella from the 25. Janiel standing back at the 20, calls for the fair catch at the 20 yard line. Well, the Hilltoppers, as you point out, uh, ate some clock. There's six minutes and one second to go in the third quarter. We're going to take a timeout here. 40 to 8. Western Kentucky looking for their first conference win in 2018. Final home game for Western Kentucky, and they are rolling right now, 40 to 8, 601 to go in the third quarter. Already saw Devin Singletary. Here's another potential player of the year in Conference USA. The fact that he's averaging 310 yards a game. We yep. watched him kind of grow up here on Conference USA. I know Bean's coverage started when he ultimately started. Not, uh, not exactly an imposing player when we first saw his action when he got into the first football game we covered and. My goodness, did he develop? Just lethal. Yeah, 25 touchdowns, four picks. He threw for 30 touchdowns last year when he's the, he was the offensive player of the year. And of course, Singletary won the player of the year in Conference USA. Jones back on the field. Holtz, here comes the blitz. Jones has nowhere to go, and he's tripped up. So it's going to be Masai White getting credit for that sack. It's going to be his fourth this year. Yeah, the right tackle thought he was going to be all alone right there. Brooks, he thought he was going to pick up Holt off of the edge. And he forgot about Masai White also looping around the end as well. The offensive line has to pass that off, or the quarterback has to see that and get rid of it. So White, just like his buddy uh, DeAndre Ferris, playing in his 48th game, picks up the sack, and it's second and 21 now for Brandon Jones and company. That looked like a run from the get go, but second and 21, I'm not sure of the call unless he saw something there that uh, he thought he could take advantage of. Well, if I'm the running back right now, I'm in the backfield and I see both defensive tackles go shade on the center. It just seems to me that you're going to go ahead and bounce that football to the outside when two of your four defensive linemen are in the A gaps. Instead, he ended up just running it right up the gut and getting tackled in the middle because 
big old 99 was sitting right there. Picked up two, so it's third and 19. Jones fires far side. Reddix stopped at the 20, and they're going to have to punt it away. Western Kentucky is going to get this ball back now with pretty decent field position. And my guess is they're going to go back to that run game to try to eat up some more of this clock. You got four minutes and about 10 seconds left by the time this punt's kicked off. Grell Green standing at the 36 yard line. Crawford's punt won't make it that far. It's hits at the 44. Takes a minor bounce, but it's going to be down just inside the 40 yard line. So penalty flag dropped way back at the 34 on the far side of the field. Not sure what that's all about. Well, that flag came flying uh, far away from the uh, the action. Yeah, but he keeps looking back to Western Kentucky sideline, which means he's looking for a number of one of the jerseys that's walking off the field right now. I think this one might go against Western Kentucky. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness on the kicking team. Number 21, 15-yard goalie on the end of the run. First down. So Justin uh, Prince, guilty of the infraction uh, for UTEP. Now the field judge wants to talk it over now with uh, Billy Williams the referee. Make sure they got that play right. Billy Williams. No not the Billy Williams who used to play for the Chicago Cubs back in the day. Nor the actor. Minus the D in the middle. <laughs> Gail Sayers. <laughs> Brian Song. Well, that was a great movie, though, wasn't it? ESPN tried to redo it. You just don't redo classics like that. ESPN butchered it. Yeah, I think they're trying to get their numbers correct and their jerseys correct right now. And for that matter, I'm wondering if they're, they even got it on the right side of the ball. Well, they got it wrong a couple times in the first half. The numbers, that is, not the call, the numbers. So here comes the mark off. The personal foul is on the receiving team. Oh, okay. That'll be 15 yard goalie from the end of the run. First down. So you had it right West initially. Michigan. Yeah, I'm not going to pat myself on the back, but I had it right. <laughs> I'll pat you on the back for you. Oh, that is a pat on the back I'm hearing from the truck. My fault. I apologize for that. But how sincere is the apology? Yeah. Good point. Eddie Senegal. So the infraction uh, goes against Western Kentucky. It pushes the ball. Inside the 25 to the 24 yard line now for Stephen Duncan. He goes to work inside four minutes, quarter number three. Duncan pulled that ball out, wanted to go, and uh, stumbled. Yeah, reached up and kind of fell victim to the turf monster right there. I'm sure the boys in the film room will have a little chuckle about that. I think Furby wanted it. Now nah, he ended up tripping up over Furby's right leg. When he tried to go ahead and pull the ball back in. Uh, Furby heads for the sidelines. Got back to the original line of scrimmage. Garland LaFrance, the freshman from New Orleans, in the backfield now with Duncan. Second and ten. Here's the freshman. Boy, he's got some wheels. Gets to the edge and gets the first down. My goodness, he was about three yards out in front of his puller, Jordan Meredith, before he even got started. So wow, the, was he speedy. LeFrance picks up 11 on the play. They move the chains. 
The way he came off the sideline was pretty nonchalant. But once he got that ball in his lap, oh my. Duncan takes it this time, and Duncan goes right up the middle to the midfield strike. Nice little setup play call right there. Everything looked exactly the same, except Duncan ended up keeping the ball and going right up the hash. And he picks up 13 more, and they move the chains again. Clock is running again after the uh, resets. Two and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Ball's up at the uh, 49 yard line. Miner showing blitz, top of your screen. Duncan picks it up, and uh, Jernigan's having a big game uh, for the Hilltoppers. Another catch for him. A lot of respect right now for the wide receiving unit at Western Kentucky. Just by the coverage that they continually keep playing tonight the, the DBs or corners are probably about five or six yards off the line of scrimmage giving a nice little cushion because they don't want anything to get behind them Duncan fires Fortenberry inside the 40 to about the 37 yard line redshirt sophomore from Opelika Alabama Boy, the tight ends we mentioned Mike Wandine is the second on the team in receptions and Fortenberry comes right behind third A little bubble screen gets down to the uh, 35 as Jernigan again. That's uh, seven catches now for Jernigan. I'm going to be interested to see what Broderick Harrell's tackle total after tonight is going to be. He's been all over the field as well. So Jernigan now flirting with a 100 yard game. He's up to 82 yards. Marcus Floyd comes in the game to go ahead and replace him. Second down. Furby. By Furby almost busted through to the second level there. He gets down to the 30 yard line. It's going to bring up a third down and about three. I think we've got a minor down. Looks like he might have got uh, kicked where you don't want to get kicked. It's Josh Ortega. Local product from El Paso, only a sophomore. He's in a lot of pain. Yeah, well, that can be painful, I'll tell you that. I'm sure in your playing days, you, don't say. you got kicked a few times. Eh, Hopefully not slugged. I tended to get a little eventful at the bottom of piles sometimes. The behavior is never condoned nor condemned, as the coaches would tell you. Hey, partner, when I was doing local sports in Columbus, Ohio, there was this girl going to the Olympic softball team, and I was pitching to her at an indoor facility, getting filmed. But I was putting the balls on my forearm, so I had like three balls on my forearm. You don't say. And I pitched, and I pit softballs on the forearm, and I pitched to her, and she hit a shot right back at the mound, and I lowered my, but I didn't want to drop the uh, softballs. Oh, of course not. So it just went underneath my forearm and nailed me square. There you go. That'll wake you up in the morning, boy. I thought I was headed to the hospital. I really did. All the photographer could do is laugh. You weren't wearing a cup? <laughs> In baseball, you're supposed to wear a cup. That's his softball. <laughs> here's, oh. here's Furby. Oh, he almost busted it again. So the fifth year senior having a good game. And they're going to move the chains again now with 44 seconds to go. Yeah, that's the game plan right now is just keep that game clock going. New set of downs for Duncan. You're looking at about a 10 second separation between the play clock and the quarter. Whistles blow this one dead. Yeah, false start right there. Full start. 85 the offense. Five yard penalty from the spot. No first down. Now, Furby has uh, 42 yards, a couple of touchdowns. I thought it'd be more than that, but uh, he's going to break one up the middle before this ball game's over. Yeah, the defense will eventually start breaking down, especially with those arm tackles. There's only so much a defense can take. And Furby, the size that he is and the amount of carries that he's getting, the rotation that they have in there, the fresh legs that they continuously put in that backfield, they're going to start busting through some of these arm tackles. 
This will be the final play of the third quarter. Duncan. Duncan looking, finding. A Fortenberry. Fortenberry is tripped up just inside the 20 yard line. A nice play by Justin Rogers. Fortenberry might have gotten down to the uh, 10, maybe the 5. He picks up 12 on the play. And that is going to be the final play of the third quarter. So we've got uh, 15 minutes of the final quarter, final home game, 2018. Hilltopper is with the ball on the move, up 40 to 8. Well, welcome back to Western Kentucky. Just trying to stay warm, I guess. Or they're happy with the 40 to 8 lead. But <laughs> not sure what to call that, anyways. Tua in Tuscaloosa remains hot. How about that Maryland Ohio State game, huh? Wow, what a game to watch today. My goodness, back and forth. Good job by Maryland. And I do respect the head man for going ahead and going after that win at the end, just going for the two. Les Miles might be headed to Kansas. Looks like that's going to be a done deal if uh, you're sure Kansas still isn't paying Charlie Weiss. I mean, <laughs> it seemed like they were paying him forever. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, UCF getting close to 23 straight wins. Wow. Furby uh, could see the end zone, and uh, I thought he was going to break one there, but uh, what a hole. Yeah, Kahani Smith ended up coming in. Didn't fall for any of the tomfoolery and the trickery. He had about four different misdirections on that play, but great job right there by the safety, Kahani Smith, staying home and making the tackle in the open field. Now, the Hilltoppers before that run with uh, 361 yards, so they'll be closer. They should have a 40 400 yard game. To poor Pearson in motion. They go the other way, and Furby has nowhere to go. He makes something out of nothing, and he stopped just shy of the five yard line. Wait, Furby wants another touchdown. Yeah, he, he doesn't want to come out of the football yeah. game either. So come on, coach. It's uh, senior, it's senior day. Unfortunately for him, they're subbing him out. You got Geno Appleberry coming on in. So a freshman for the fifth year senior. Furby goes to the sidelines and says, all right, give Gino one play. Yeah, empty backfield, shotgun set. Appleberry in motion, and penalty flags will call this dead before it develops. Ball start. 61 for the offense. Five-yard building. Still second down. It's Jordan Meredith again, the redshirt sophomore from right here in Bowling Green. That's a couple of times he's been guilty. These are just the mental mistakes that you're going to have to go through and growing pains. And again, we talked about this at the beginning of the broadcast was the fact that at the beginning of this season, none of these offensive linemen played in their positions starting off. This is one of the things that the team's been searching for for the last couple of years. After having a dominant front, they're starting to play together now. Nine games. This is the 10th game of those guys starting together. Duncan, a little shovel pass in the middle. This one's going to be picked. And that's going to end the drive for Western Kentucky. Kalon Beverly uh, comes up. That's his second INT this year. They're really on the field. The interception, first down. They're pulling the backside guard. They're having that tight end follow behind him. And Quan Dean was the one supposed to be getting that football, but it seems like Duncan was a little distracted on when to throw that ball. Coach has said Beverly uh, having an up and down season, but uh, the last three or four weeks playing much better football. Gets a second pick of the season. A nice job of juggling, keeping his focus. Yeah, it's good concentration, especially down there and all that traffic, being able to focus and bring that football in. So Brandon Jones uh, back on the lead this offense, and he'll start at the uh, six yard line. 94 yards away from their second touchdown. He's got four wide receivers, uh, three to the near side. They're going to keep it on the ground. Quadres Wadley, who had a 46 yard run last week, longest for him in his career, and the longest since Aaron Jones had an 83 yard run two years ago. How about Aaron Jones and the Packers uh, a couple games ago? Wow, is he doing well in the NFL? It went 15 carries, 145 yards, 9.6, and a couple of scores. Packers needed. They need that win against Seattle. Yeah, it looks like they're not going to be playing in the postseason this year. 
I was going to say they needed that running back, but I guess you had to remind me since I'm a Packer fan that uh, <laughs> they needed that one against I Seattle. I apologize for that negativity, Mike. Wide open, Lucero. David Lucero has his first catch. I think the Hilltoppers thought he might have stepped out of bounds. Instead, he takes it to the house. My goodness, Deontay Ruffin, what are you doing? 88 yards on the play. And then you got Drell Green grabbing the back of his hamstring at this point in time, trying to chase down Lucero. Like, when the play is still going on, I understand that nowadays with the calls that a lot of the defensive backs are getting about hitting players out of bounds, and clearly he looked like he was about to go out of bounds there. You have your defensive back, Deontay Ruffin, pulling up, and I don't know if that's laziness or he doesn't want to try to get a penalty or ultimately he gave up a touchdown. He's going to get chewed out when he gets to the sideline. So the Miners doing all the scoring here in the second half. Uh, whistle right blows this dead. Timeout call Kentucky. on the field. So Western Kentucky calls the uh, timeout this time. That's the first of three here in the second half. 30 seconds left. So Lucero, who had four catches for 62 yards last week, goes 88. Gets his second touchdown here in 2018. And see what's going to happen now is the coach is going to be bringing up that play in particular. And he's going to say, look, now we just lost number nine. Because number nine is grabbing the back of his leg because he just hurt his hamstring, having to chase down a play that Ruffin gave up. And number nine, Draw Green, is a senior. So that hamstring, they only have one more game to play next week. And if your hamstring is, I mean, that thing will, even if there were five or six games to go, that hamstring can nag you for, for the longest time. Well, we're all positive in the fact that, you know, they're, they're dominating this football game with a 40 to 14 score right now up on the board. But at this point in time, you still have almost a quarter left of this game. And you have guys on the football field, especially across the football, given their all out effort. So you got to continually bring it, man. You got to keep your foot on the gas pedal because stuff like that is going to hurt your team physically. Jones. Fires has the two point conversion. Lucero gets the touchdown and he gets the uh, two point conversion. So Brandon Jones gets the another touchdown pass. That's his second. So Lucero gets his second of the season. And all the scoring in the second half has belonged to the Miners. 12.45 to go in the ball game. 40 to 16 now in Western Kentucky. Conference USA Football on BN Sports is brought to you by Ice Cold Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville. Well, Brett, uh, Dana Dimmel has told us in the past uh, that they've done everything right this year except win. But right now they're doing everything right in the second half, uh, scoring a couple of touchdowns and keeping Western Kentucky off that scoreboard in the second half after uh, the Hilltoppers put 40 on the board in the first half. Well, you look down on the sideline right now and you got the guys in the white jerseys and the coach is still working hard trying to develop plays and get opportunities for these guys to go ahead and score some points. My distraction is over there across the field looking at what's going on on Western Kentucky sideline. They've been out of this football game for the most part now for about an hour. So those coaches are over there trying to keep these guys heads in the game. Kick taken at the uh, six yard line. And it's going to be uh, Darden. Darden gets up uh, over the uh, 25 to about the 26. That's where Stephen Duncan and company will uh, take over. You know, when you're down 40 to nothing, I got to take my hat off to the Miners. I mean, you're down 40 to nothing. You come out in the second half, it's kind of kind of tough to be motivated. Yes. Even if you love playing the game. Yeah, it's one of the tough things about being in this situation in football games. You know, at the University of Miami, we were always, at this point in time, the Western Kentucky team, and a lot of the teams we were playing against back in the early 2000s ended up being uh, the minors and it was tough man the seniors are trying to get off the field or they're trying to cut their playing time in half it's tough to stay in it Hilltoppers toppers keep it on the ground tackle made Denzel uh, Chukakweu junior from Rockwall Texas 
half the time you got the seniors over there on the sideline talking about what they're doing after the game where they're going whose party they're going to so it's it's a distraction man that's there's a reason why they have all the kids that are either red shirted or not dressing they keep them separate from the rest of the team because those are the guys that are going to get into your head and whisper in your helmet when you're getting distracted and you're going to get yourself in trouble and possibly not go onto the football field when it's your turn there's samuel trying to bounce to the edge uh, need him coming up to make the tackle at the uh, 32. I'm sure the Hilltoppers are happy to eat some clock, but after putting 40 on the board in the first half, I'm sure they'd love to score at least one touchdown here in the second half. Well, especially if they're starting to sub in some of their players. You know, you want your team, especially after a season the way that they've had, to try to get some playing time. A lot of these kids that are on the sideline right now that, that haven't seen live action have the opportunity on games like tonight to go ahead and test out all of that stuff they've been working on in practice. Duncan. Out of the empty backfield, gets all the way up to the 40-yard uh, line. It's going to be a first down for Western Kentucky. Stop the clock with 11.09 to go to reset. Clock is running again, 11.06. But a new set of downs uh, for uh, Stephen Duncan uh, getting his fourth start here in the 2018 season. A couple of uh, scoring strikes in the uh, first half. So he's got eight touchdowns, five picks. And the big story in the first half, of course, was five picks, all made by Western Kentucky. Furby. Furby picks up uh, maybe two, possibly three on the play. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm watching UTEP right now down there in the front. They're still violent. They're still grabbing guys, throwing guys around. Trying to dish rag offensive linemen. Hats off to those guys up in the front for UTEP right now. Chukakweu down there throwing people around. And I'm watching Mascaro and Reese. They're still getting after it down there. Yeah, I'm sure they'd love to get the football back and maybe put one or two more scores on to make this respectable. I mean, I think in the back of their mind, they know they can't pull this 40 to 16 game out. Although I guess you never say never, huh? I mean, Old number nine right there. Hodgkin's still getting involved. Soda. Soda's involved in that tackle right there, too. So these guys aren't quitting. That's that's one of the things that I'm pretty impressed with right now. It's not like they just recently went down 24 points. You know, it's been uh, it's been a pretty convincing gap since the second quarter. Well, like we talked about, Bill Clark from uh, UAB saying that they only won 19 to nothing and Blazers were averaging about 33, 34 points a game. And Clark was impressed with the fight this minor team had. So all those picks in a 40-nothing deficit at halftime, they had to be a little bit shell-shocked in the locker room. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. Like, and, and the fact that they kept having to put their defense in these horrible situations, you know, constantly going on the football field in red zone, trying to defend what was going on and the landslide that was happening on Western Kentucky's offensive side of the football it just it's tough man hats off to coach Cox over there and the defensive coordinator at UTEP for just continually getting these guys to come to work and practice hard and do it with such little backup Appleberry another misdirection as they uh, send Garland to France in motion they keep running that play though about uh, three or four times and uh, sooner or later La, La France is going to get the football the miners better be on their toes. Because the freshman from New Orleans got some wheels. Big Chris Richardson just went in there for Chukakweu. The France. There he goes. Oh, nice tackle. What a play. Nice job. Beautiful by Trace Mascaro right there flying in as things are getting a little bit touchy right now Really good play watch the pursuit great angle coming down the field Well, he got out there in a hurry. Yeah, man really nice play right there Nowhere to go nice fill 
after the play. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, late hit out of bounds. Number 28 of the offense. 15 yard penalty at the end of the run. Third down. It's Gino. I'm wondering if Gino wanted to go ahead and deliver that hit after he was out of bounds. Well, Western Kentucky. Hate to say shooting themselves in the foot in the second half with a 40 to 16 lead, but uh, they really their offense is really bogged down because of penalties here in the second half. Before they head for uh, Rust in Louisiana, I'm sure Mike Sanford happy with the victory here tonight, but I'm sure he's going to bring that up. Yeah, it got a little sloppy for them in the second half. Nice hole right side, good cut back. There's the freshman again. All the way up to the 49 yard line, the Garland of France picks up 13 on the play. Well, it seems like if they were looking for that big playmaker, and I know the fact that their number one wide receiver, Sloan, their big playmaker, is not in tonight, I think they found a nice, bright, shining star for the future of this program with LaFrance. They seem like they're going to be able to utilize his talents real nice here in the future on offense. Well, the France picks up 13, but uh, not enough to move the chains. And so Alex Ronello back on the punt again. Uh, Janiel standing at the 10 yard line for UTEP. Nice kick by Ronello. Who Janiel backed off just at the last second. Penalty flag drop yeah. at the 13. They got one at the 35 as well. Pretty good acting skills right there by the punter. They might have uh, earned themselves a flag too. The element in the striped shirts keep him busy here in the second half. There are two fouls on the play. Running into the kicker. 23 of the receiving team. Kick catch interference personal foul. On the kicking team, those goals are all set. Replay for that. Oh wow! So Alex Ranella will have to come back and do it again. And look who's running out there—the first man over top of that football. Good old number 15, the ghost on the roster, Calvin Brownholtz, the one that ended up laying out Jernigan earlier on in this football game. Yeah, we got to thank Joe, our statistician, to dig out that name since he wasn't on the roster. Now the Hilltop taking their time to come back out on the field to punt this away. And I'm sure they're not going to discuss a fake punt right now with 6.45 to go. And Unless a bunch of new guys are coming in, maybe on the punt team. Well, the officials certainly gave him enough time, huh? Well, the time was flying by for me listening to the oh the banter going back and forth on that field. Ronella gets a second opportunity, and uh, they get the nice. Western Kentucky roll that time all the way down to the five yard line almost hit Janiel. Six minutes and 32 seconds to go on senior night here in Bowling Green Kentucky. There's the numbers favoring the Hilltoppers. But back in Bowling Green it's a 40 to 16 right now deep into the fourth quarter 632 to go. How about Spencer Brown? Of course, you can't argue with Singletary's numbers or Mason Fine, but at least uh, UAB, they've won the division. And Spencer Brown has uh, been a big, big part of that. Not only that, just the national attention that these guys are finally getting. You see a program that didn't exist just two or three years ago, and now there's talks about them in the top 25, and they're always on game day and topic of discussion. So congratulations, to Coach Clark and UAB. The Blazers just staking their flag right now in college football. 
Well, the Miners uh, had 94 yards to go in the last possession. Now they have 95 yards. Ball on the five-yard line, trailing 40 to 16. Jones keeps it, stumbles ahead over the 10-yard uh, line. Nice pickup on first down for the Miners. Time is not on their side, though. If they want to punch in another one, uh, time and distance, of course, is 6:17. Clock is rolling. Picked up six, so it's second and four. Hughes off to the races, all the way up to the 25-yard line. So uh, Trayvon Hughes used sparingly tonight, uh, but as you said, big back. Yeah, big bruising back, coming in with some fresh legs. Hughes picks up 15 on the play. They move the chains. 5:49. Clock is running. Clock continues to run as uh, Brandon Jones looks over at the sidelines. That sucked up another uh, seven or eight seconds. Wants to put it up in the air. And this one is incomplete. The intended receiver was Josh Weeks. They had that blanket coverage right there, too, by Juwan Gardner. Normally used primarily as their nickel back, but playing a lot of that safety role tonight, especially with Terrell Green being down with that knee, or the hamstring, rather. For that corner cat off the edge. Five thirty-three to go. The clock stopped with the incompleted pass. Twin receivers to the top and the bottom, and this one's going to be incomplete. Josh Weeks ran it down, but ran out of real estate. So third down, 5:28 to go. You're down 40 to 16. If it gets to be fourth down again, do you think they just go for it, or do you think they punt it away? This deep at the 25-yard line. I think they'll go punt it. It's just you don't want to add insult to injury. You might as well just continue to play the football game and don't allow Western Kentucky to put any more board points on the board. Miner's going to call a timeout. Western Kentucky. Two of eight. So Western Kentucky calls. Their oh, it is UTEP that called the timeout. PA speak. PA announcer had it wrong. Corrected himself. So UTEP takes the timeout. They're two of eight on third down tonight. Just an abysmal start here. If you joined us late in the first half, UTEP on their first two possessions through picks. They had five picks in the first half. One being a pick six, and they headed for the locker room, trailing 40 to nothing. For the Miners, uh, to their credit, didn't fold the tents. So far, they're shutting out uh, Western Kentucky in the second half, 16 to nothing. Well, they did have that 22-point performance in the fourth quarter. You know, these guys aren't finished, aren't uh, aren't finished playing the game yet tonight. They want to go ahead and still continue to work their craft. Jones, wow, felt the pressure, escaped, and he gets up over the 30-yard uh, line. Uh, shy of the first down, but did he did a nice job of eluding the pressure there. Now he's going to be banged up. Yeah, Devin Key ended up falling on top of him when he made that tackle, and Ben Holt was right there as well for him. I think he might have had that ball pinned up underneath his rib cage when he ended up falling on top of it. That probably caused a little bit of a problem for him. Hopefully it's just the wind knock out of him. That can be painful in itself. But yeah. You get a quick recovery. Let's take a look here. He's got the ball pinned up underneath him. Mm, that might be it. Yeah. But Mike, we talked about what was ailing UTEP tonight. A lot of it was the turnover situation, and they already had 19 turnovers coming into this game as well. And, and going into it, you know, they, they've always been outscored when it comes to their turnovers, 80 to 22. So it seems like tonight is just adding on top of that more and more and more. And we'll come back after we get going on with this injury. 40 to 16 here for Western Kentucky in Bowling Green. Well, back at Bowling Green, Western Kentucky up on top 40 to 16. Mike Leeson along with Brett Romberg. 
great to have you with us here on the uh, the final telecast for BN Sports here in 2018. Liners with 16 second half points, 5.13 to go, facing a fourth and six. They punt it away. And it goes out of bounds at about the 42 yard line, depending on the spot. And so now the Hilltoppers can really eat some clock with 5.05 to go. And the good news with old number eight for UTEP, Brandon Jones ended up coming off the old the field on his, under his own volition right there. I think it was what we were figuring with just getting the, the wind knocked out of him landing on that football. Bill Toppers will make it eight straight victories on senior night. First conference win here in 2018. They'll close up on the road at Louisiana Tech next week. Utah. Utah will drop to one and ten. One and six in conference play. They head back to El Paso to take on Southern Miss next week. Duncan remains at quarterback. Samuel gets the call, tries to bounce to the outside, and he is pulled down by Nick Needham. Samuel has had a tough time getting to the edge and turning the corner, and most of the time it's because of number five. If yeah, Nick Needham's been stellar coming up and filling that outside gap he's been all over the place he's been deep he's been sideline to sideline and again you can't say enough about your defensive leader the guy that is just continuously giving you everything he's got and his consistency and one of the things that is going to go ahead and separate him from a lot of the defensive backs in this league Samuel picked up three so it's second and seven of the 44 here he goes again good head of steam as he hit the line but uh, it was like hitting a brick wall Sione Tupo, the freshman from Allen, Texas, in on the stop again. Called his uh, name uh, quite often tonight. So both these schools with a lot of young players. And of course, as we mentioned, it's senior night. Only 10 seniors playing their final game. Here for Western Kentucky, final home game, I should say. Yeah, and again. I love pumping up the offensive line and I'm excited for what's happening here with Coach Woods and the offensive line for West Kentucky. But again, these guys started off this season. Not one of these guys is a senior. There's only three other teams in college football that has an offensive line with no seniors on it. Well, Duncan gets shy of the 50, stopped at about the 49 yard line. And that's going to bring up a fourth down with 322. And they're going to stop the clock with 319. It's fourth down. And I guess you punt it away here, right, Fighter? Yeah, you're going to go ahead and allow them to try to go the long way, see if they can make it. But that situation of going 90 something yards, because you know they're going to go ahead and put it probably within the 10. So well, it's going to be a long run. FAU goes down to a North Texas in a thriller on Thursday nights. Kentucky beats Middle Tennessee and Middle Tennessee will close against FIU at home next week. And you see uh, Texas A&M over at UAB. So Middle Tennessee and uh, UAB stepping outside the conference. So Marshall picks up another victory as well. We're now going to punt it away. Janiel standing back at the 10 yard line with just 319 to go before they uh, close the books on this one. Fair catch uh, caught at the 15, 15 yard, yard line. line. Uh, you know Brett's similar to the teams we see on the field each weekend it takes a team of people to bring you the uh, sights and sounds every Saturday let's take a moment now to show appreciation to those behind the scene like producer Chris Jones yeah, and our director Art Izquierdo as well our technical director uh, Mark Moreda and our audio guy Bray Hopkins engineer uh, Luis Schneider by the way it's Bree Hopkins it's our audio girl not our audio guy Good and call. our engineer as well Fred Chochi is in the building as well Terry Keene on tape. And our graphics guy, Andrew Fairstein. And associate director, uh, Adrian. Give it to me. Izquierdo. There we go. I like it. Great pronunciation. Uh, videographer. Yeah, Federico Saria. Saria. That's what he told me. Saria. Oh, he wanted you to go ahead and enunciate for him, <laughs> huh? Right. A digital producer, uh, Alice Camargo. Yeah, congratulations as well to him. A special thanks to our stats here, uh, Joe Pecoraro. Did a nice job up here. 
And so we want to thank everyone to tune in uh, to be in sports on this conference USA package. As we hit uh, inside three minutes now, 2.49 to go. Second and four at the uh, 21. Hopefully we didn't miss anybody. No, and also a nice little shout out to Bree Hopkins as well, our audio director. It's her birthday tomorrow, so she's oh, really? Gonna, yeah, I think she's, she's going to be spending a good afternoon in Nash Vegas tomorrow. Lacero at the midfield stripe, so Brandon Jones throws another strike. And the Miners aren't done yet now with uh, two and a half minutes to go. Pick up a 30 on the play. Nice pocket presence right there, stepping up, delivering the football. Lucero's been pretty consistent for them. Great tight end play out of him. This one's complete down to the five yard line. And that's uh, going to be Eric Brown. Picks up 45 on the play. So the last uh, two plays, they picked up 75 yards. And that's over the top of Jordan Gonzalez as well. That's one of the things you don't want. It's almost like you're going to be playing prevent defense at this point in time. So this is almost a slap in the face, the fact that UTEP is getting behind the defensive backfield right now. And I know they got the subs in, and there's a lot of guys that aren't starters playing right now, but it's still still a learning lesson. You can't let anything get behind you, especially this late in the ball game. Well, that was a pretty ball he threw right on the money. Janiel in motion to the top of your screen now. Jones from the gun throws the fade, and uh, Janiel ran out of real estate. <laughs> So Mike Sanford, as Brett pointed out, giving some of the backups a chance to play now, but uh, Sanford hoping that they keep him out of the end zone here with 93 seconds to go. Well, you're going to get the coach speak where, you know, we shouldn't see much of a drop-off, and you guys got to go in there and pick up exactly where the starters left off. It's the right mentality. Wadley in the backfield. It's second and goal from the six. Jones fires. Oh, he had his man. It's Janiel in uh, breaking it up there. Number 17 is a uh, Cannon Jackson. Again, delivering a nice fastball right there. He didn't have much time, but Cannon Jackson was all over him. Good defensive play by him. And again, it's, it's about 40 degrees here. So sitting on the sideline for three hours, and then all of a sudden has to come on in there and defend a football and explode once the play starts taking off. It's a good job. Great concentration right now by Western Kentucky second string guys. Yeah, Jones almost had his third scoring strike here in the second half. They try to run it in. And Wadley gets inside the, uh, the five yard line and not much more. So he up to make uh, the stop. Uh, Jordan uh, Gonzalez. Defensive back here for Western Kentucky, number uh, 21. So it's fourth and goal at the two. Sixty-five seconds to go before they put this one in the books. The first win in conference play for the Hilltoppers here in 2018. Big play here. Can they keep him out of the end zone? If not, the Miners with three second-half touchdowns. Jones looks and he has his man. Was he inbounds? No, they ended up getting rid of the football, too. Red X on the receiving end, and the Hilltoppers keep him out of the end zone. He right. went through about three different progressions at this point in time, and his last resort right now is getting the ball back to Red X. Good uh, defensive play right there. Not a bad deal by Zalas going ahead and trying to catch him up in the air and throw him, drive him out of bounds. Well, just 42 seconds to go, and Mike Sanford's going to have the uh, the victory on senior night. They're eighth straight here at Western Kentucky, and special thanks to uh, Jeremy St. Louis, Randall Hill, and uh, Charles Arbuckle back in the studios in Miami. Not going to lie to you, I was a little jealous of the food spread they had back there in the studios in Miami. I didn't get blessed with the uh, collard greens and some of that mac and cheese. We ended up having sandwiches, and but you were happy to be back in the booth. Oh, of course, of course, clearly. Especially with that 5:30 flight you have back. From oh yeah, yeah. We got the alarm clock set. Now the final 42 seconds of the ball game. Now, 
up over the five to about the uh, six. It's Furby again. Uh, That'll do it. So Furby with a couple of uh, touchdowns in his final home game as a fifth year senior. DeAndre Furby, the 6'1, 230 pound fifth year senior from Smyrna, Tennessee. And that's going to be the final play. And here's the final 15 seconds. And the final home game in 2018 goes to Mike Sanford. All right, your thoughts. Kind of uh, two different stories for two different halves, huh? Well, again, you know, the train came off the track early on in this football game. Five interceptions in the first half. And, and it wasn't like Western Kentucky had to go the field on any of those interceptions either. It was red zone interceptions and pick sixes. So it was almost like you, the, the, the minors were doomed from the beginning. But a great job and, and, and a great opportunity to show what he had coming in in the second half. Brandon Jones did a good job. He looked physically more imposing than we saw out of Loxley. And, and unfortunately, it looked like Loxley's injury might have got the best of him tonight. But a great job. Good job by Coach Sanford, Coach Woods. And, uh, and, and a phenomenal, phenomenal job tonight by Western Kentucky getting that first conference win. And, and again, I don't know if you're playing for Coach Sanford uh, tonight, but I guarantee you they're playing for those 10 gentlemen that had two conference championships here in Bowling Green and contributed so much to this program. Well, Mike Sanford, it's funny you brought that up. He said when you're an assistant coach, the relationship with the players are instantaneous. Of course, he was an assistant at uh, Boise State, at Stanford, at Notre Dame. He said when you're the head coach, it's not as quick. But he said the relationships don't stop on senior night. Uh, they go on for life once you play college football. Well, some of the key plays, of course, it all started in the first half with five interceptions. It all started with Roger Craig gets his first of 2018. Grell Green gets one. Great concentration right here by uh, Darden. And even more so right there by Devin Key. And there's your pick six right there. Gage, Gage Walker. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about uh, Stephen Duncan gets his fourth start. He throws for 214 and a couple of touchdowns. But again, field position, the key in field position given to him by that defense for Western Kentucky. Today. And not only that, but I also noticed a little bit of swagger coming from him. You know, we saw tonight. Not only did he want to run the football, but he also wanted to run over the opposing players. And he got a little bit cute one time with a nice little shuffle pass, kind of Aaron Rodgers-esque if you want to go with a Green Bay Packer reference. Unfortunately, he was over the line of scrimmage, but you could see his mind start to work now. And, and behind a nice offensive line, who congratulations for the most part, uh, four out of the five guys got their 10th start together tonight. And, uh, and, and looking for something positive to build on every single game that you're playing every single night that you're putting what you have worked on all week long uh, to fruition basically so so a nice offensive line job tonight great job clearly by the defensive backfield and the defense of Western Kentucky and uh, and it will be a long quiet flight home tonight back to Texas for coach Demo and his squad but not to sure about it though but I mean how about the second half huh? you're down 40 to nothing and they come back and score a couple of touchdowns. I mean, it would have been easy to fold the tent. Well, you will talk about that in the meeting. I imagine tomorrow morning you guys are going to get in there and, and, and the offensive staff is going to go ahead and take a peek at the game. And, and they just didn't have a chance. And then coming out in the second half, total different quarterback, a little bit more attitude. I, I know there was a lot of physicality down on that field, a lot of chippiness going on, a lot of verbal altercation as well going back and forth between these two teams. And, uh, and, yeah, they did put up a nice little fight at the end of the football game. They, they got 16 points. And uh, it, uh, it, it's going to be a learning process, I think, for, for, for not only UTEP but also for Western Kentucky as well. I think, I think there was a lot to take away from this game tonight. Two teams, one and nine. One had one conference win. The other was still searching for their conference win. So uh, it, it, was, it was a giant learning curve for both programs that are starting to build and, uh, and, and capitalize on a rebuild right now. First conference win for Western Kentucky, but they ace straight on senior night. That's going to do it from us. For Brent Romberg and our entire BN Sports crew, Mike Leeson saying uh, so long from Houchin Smith Stadium here in Bowling Green, Kentucky. The final score once again, Western Kentucky 40, UTEP 16. Now we leave you with some sights and sounds from the 2018 college football season. So long, everybody. Thanks for joining us.